Are we live? Are we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue with some space exploration. And, uh... Oh yeah, Foenestra wants even more power. Because apparently the 10 gigawatts was a bold-faced lie. Alright, so whenever we power this thing up, uh, it takes its sweet time initializing. Uh, but once it does that, we can press R on one of these things. Um, some kind of selection something or other to do with destination, I guess. Uh, the instant we do that, the power spikes, and I can't really show it here anymore, but uh, the instant we do that, the power needs spikes even beyond 10 gigawatts, and uh, immediately crashes. So, um, I think we're going to have to build yet another power plant. Um, could probably... Let's see. Foenestra resupply is currently on its way to Nalvis orbit. But if I copy paste, we can see exactly where this fits. Um, I might just build some scaffolding around this just so that we know exactly how much room we've got. And that's looking pretty good. And I'll probably just build another power plant down here. Let's go grab some scaffolding. And... not logistic bots. Take them all away, thank you. Whiskers, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, let's grab... Now... Tiles... And get started. I think this time I'll copy the design uh, that we made for the endgame spaceship. Where instead of all of this water having to be pushed through and bottleneck in spots like this, uh, there's going to be a repeating pattern that pushes the water straight back into the nearest heat exchanger. Um, or at least as close as possible as we can get to such a pattern. Go grab some more scaffolding. I should check if I can reach it from here. I actually can. That's a little bit surprising. I am the sky. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right. Um, that is probably enough. So we're going to have reactors again, and actually why don't I just grab the spaceship blueprint, and I can just trim everything else away. Um, did they put spaceship floor down? I probably should have realized they would do that. Interesting arbitrary pattern the bot the bots went for there. All 
Alright. Um, do I need this? Do I need this? Do I need these? Good morning. How did we sleep? Uh, technically, yes. Revan, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And get rid of that. And these. And this goes here. And apparently we need to manually mark that for deconstruction, even though we just did a planner over it. What is with these holes here? Oh, that's a shadow, actually. That's fine. Alright, so the question is how many... Um, how many high temp turbine generators would be required to get the most out of, let's say, eight antimatter reactors? Although with this design we could really expand this indefinitely. Actually, could we? We would need to push these up one tile, I think, if we're going to have more input-output here. Um, but I think 8 will probably be enough, I hope. I, I would certainly hope so, anyway. Um, let's go a fiver here. And there should probably be a pump, actually. Alright. Um, I don't suppose we have any reactors here. Nope. I am thinking about taking these ones. Um, we would have to lose a bunch of heat and... Well, I could keep these here and build this around them. Um, but at the very least we'd have to lose a bunch of steam and stuff. Uh, it's not quite going to infringe on where our spaceship dock is. I guess we could move the spaceship dock. Um, we'd also... Uh, I think we would have room to put this up here as well. So maybe I should just... Uh, uh, maybe... Maybe I should just sacrifice what we've already got going here. I could stop putting fuel into it. And let the steam run out. But I could use picker dollies to rescue the steam if I really want to. That is a lot of energy. Or I could pump some steam over here and then pump it back. Uh, but more to the point, let's first do the math of uh, just how much, just how big this reactor should be if we're going to bottleneck it, if we're going to limit it to eight reactors. Um, so we got 400 megawatts, neighbor bonus, it doesn't actually show the neighbor bonus, um, while it doesn't have fuel in it, even though... Wait a minute, you don't mean to tell me... It... Surely it doesn't lose its neighbor bonus just because they don't have more input fuel in them. That would be a bit weird. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it works like a nuclear reactor. Um... So this is plus 200% neighbor bonus, and these ones are plus 300% neighbor bonus. Uh, so we've got 800 megawatts times 4, 3200, plus 
uh, 400 times 4, 1600 times 4, 6400, uh, 9600 megawatts? Is that right? I feel like that can't be right. That's less than 10 gigawatts and this thing gives us 11. Uh, let's try again. 400, 800, oh no, it's triple on the sides. Yeah, 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 so 4 times 1200, plus, so 4800 plus, uh, 6400, 11,200, that sounds familiar. Um, yeah, if we just replace this, I'm pretty sure it won't have enough power. So we'll just build another one down here. Uh, so 11.2 gigawatts is how much heat we can generate. Um, and this is 560 times 12. Is a bit more than half. Oh, that's right. This ratio was for the spaceship, which is a bit specific. Uh, hmm. If we've got eight of these on each side, it will definitely consume more than the reactors can give us. Unless we add even more over here. Um, I don't particularly want to have to add even more reactors to this. Oh, this isn't connect. Uh, but also the ratios are wrong. Um, if we're going for the max we can get out of this. So we need 5.5 high temp turbine generators on each side. 8 is a bit much. Let's make it 6. Uh, so 6 times 1024 is 6144 water per second which is 11 my temp turbine generators I guess we could just keep 12 for the symmetry of it um Leads me to wonder how we ended up with this ratio here earlier. Alright, so we need like six. Uh, six reactors on each side. I'll just double check that math as well. Well, no, I know that 12 of these will support six of these easily. Okay, um, so that's not going to have a gap there, we have a gap, a gap, and this part, we could just have it go one, two, three, It'd probably be for the best. It might be unnecessary. I would rather have a bit more water flow up here than is necessary, than not enough. guess we just mirror this and of course there isn't enough room we need about 12 tiles we're gonna need some more room here uh, let's see 
16. Perfect. Let's grab some more scaffolding. That might be all we need, but I'm sure I'll find that I want to put some more down shortly. bots still hovering there for. Also, I would kind of like this to line up for no particular reason. Oh, there's just enough room as well. Unless I bring this out here, which we can. Alright, so we're going to copy that over here. Poles for now. This can go here actually. Perfect fit. No, it's one off being a perfect fit because of the pumps. Oh, that's tragic. Pure tragedy. And I guess I'll put some scaffolding here, after all. Why are the wires like this? There we go. Alright, we're actually short of high temp heat exchangers, although I think the construction ships will have some. Uh, our batteries are getting murdered, so let's throw in some more fusion reactors for now. Also pick up these weirdo bots. We still have random spaceship floor tiles. Doesn't look like it. Oh, we do have more. No, I think I just ran out of... I temp turbo, uh, heat exchanges. Okay. Um, we could probably... Don't have any... Well, we do have water storage here, but it's only in the high temp heat exchanges, and we can't read how much we've got. Um, I think the obvious place to add that in... would actually be here, and then we don't need these power poles. Yeah, that lines up very close to perfectly. Let's copy paste flip. And more scaffolding up here. Power is actually almost recharged already. doesn't mess up the uh, flipping of the Naquim heat pipes if it's just the small ones. So I can do this. And then... Probably not that, actually.
That should be plenty of water storage. Um, I don't suppose I can link this. It's 16 tiles. Hmm. I could link it with four pipes. Uh, nine and seven. I could link it with two. Always better to, uh, no matter how symmetrical you make it, it's going to end up with, like, arbitrary, one side has a bunch of water, the other doesn't. So it's better to link these, I think. Um, we also want to link up... Well, I was going to say the 5,000 degree steam, but that never seems to be an issue. No, I have seen it imbalanced with the stored steam here. So we'll link that as well. Um, and we can also use the stored steam as... Oh. That would be... Yeah, that would probably be as good a place as any uh, to link these up. Not so worried about this part. That's going to be in the way of... I think I would like to put the biochemical facilities here. Yep, that should be good. Um, and we can have... water connections here just to keep all of that balanced. Uh, what's the shortest? I think it was actually two tiles apart here. We can't use a single pipe and keep that symmetrical. It doesn't have to be like a single piece of pipe. The the flow. I don't really care about the flow rate from here to here. Um, it's just so that it can slowly balance itself. Um, so we can probably just do that. And then... Request a chest. I want this in the middle if I can. There's no such thing. So, three pipe, requester, inserter, read directly from this storage tank, and water has to be less than, I don't know, 20,000? No, uh, 10,000 is definitely enough. I mean, and if this is more empty, it'll be able to pump the water through faster. Also, the water tends to, uh, the water gets sucked into the high temp heat exchangers as well. So this could be empty and this could have like 2,000 water in it. So yeah, I think we'll... I think we'll aim to keep this relatively empty. I'll even try putting that at 5,000 this time. Um, I'll just copy this setting. And we want water from ice. Uh, could I also... Well, no, I can't do the water outputs on both sides. It's fine. And then... RoboPort or two. That fits well. Doesn't quite connect up here. I can just put down a radar construction pylon. Ooh, 
and here come our bots. Uh, I would like... I don't think we can reach this across. Not quite. Hmm. I would like to have some storage for the 5,000 degree steam, just for power management. Uh, preferably... I could actually just put this here. Don't think there's anywhere else that's convenient to squeeze this in. Doesn't look like it. Wouldn't quite be room for an underground here. I guess that pipe could squiggle up that way. We could put this here. That one, not so much. Yeah, we could do that. I don't know. It'd probably look a bit tacky. Oh, and then that steam wouldn't really be able to connect there. Never mind. These two are fine. Um, so we're just gonna... Well, first of all, let's get rid of that wire mess. We've already got red wire here, we may as well use it. And up here. And what's this one set to? Huh? Oh, that's from the spaceship. Okay, what did we use up here? Steam, less than 20k. On the output condition. So if this tank drops below 20k steam, we're going to put more fuel in. Uh, but we're only going to put more fuel in when we take fuel out. Or rather, take up the used canisters. That should be fine. And then put the storage on this side as well. Very convenient, actually. Cool. I think we're going to have to go on another little trip uh, in order to get the antimatter reactors to support this. Um, I think I checked this earlier, actually. Yeah. Uh, although I do have enough... Uh, high temp, I'm sure. Yep. Alright, let's head back down this way. We also need some Naquim heat pipe. I don't think I can... Uh, weirdly enough, I can handcraft a few of those. We need 12, I believe. But I can only make five right now. Well, may as well. It's a little bit slow. Uh, 
Look at the water does get all the way to here. Fantastic. And one last thing, I was going to link the 5k steam at each end here. Um, I think we'll just do that like this. And figure out how many tiles that'll be. It is exactly 15 plus 9. Okay, I'll take it. we'll just go get those reactors now. Um, I don't know what else we need to be doing at Foenestra other than giving it more power right now. I'll jump in the player ship to make that happen, I think. We'll leave these here for the moment. Orbit. And we're off. Okay. Uh, what else while we're doing all that? Nequitite is in motion. Antimatter stream. Uh, still only somewhat seems to be keeping up. Like there's... Oh. I was going to say, every time I check, there's antimatter stream in these containers, but it never looks like it's enough to fill the next ship. Can you make send a cargo rocket into Foenestra? I figure the fuel demand would be a lot. That's a good question. Uh, let's see. Target... Uh, Oenestra. Uh, 200,000 liquid rocket fuel. Yeah, 200k. Maybe bring a cargo pad with you and set it up just in case. Uh, I don't know if I want to bother with that. Um, it's a relatively short trip, and the construction ships have most everything. I just didn't want them accumulating, uh, uh, antimatter reactors because they're very expensive. Although I was a little bit careless, um, growing antimatter reactors out here, designing it within the robot range. So we've made a few more than we necessarily need. Uh, not that many more. I think we have some here as well. No, we don't. That's fine. Hey, Captain Tree. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Is this the end of game approaching? Yes, it is. We've got Spaceship Victory being researched. I've already designed a spaceship that can beat the game. However, it is 3,700 hull stress. Um, which is going to require a lot of research. Um, I haven't had any great... Uh, revelations as to how we could make a ship significantly smaller than that. Um, it's basically a balancing act of we need this much power, there's no negotiating that, uh, and then we need to build a ship around it with enough engines to go 250 speed. 
Um, I don't think... It, it might be possible to squeeze it down to 3,500, uh, just under 3,500, but uh, I seriously have my doubts as to whether we can beat the game with less research than that. I've been watching Coyote on stream for 10 hours now trying to finish and balance it for 3,500 stress. It's been a journey. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, um, it wouldn't surprise me if you can get it down to 3,500, uh, especially if you don't care about symmetry or anything like that. Uh, we could cut out this spaceship floor here. Um, but, like, this is already approaching the minimum, I think. Like, I, I, I seriously, seriously doubt you could get it below 3,000. I would be very impressed. So, pretty much all we've got... Uh, all we've got going on before we finish the game is... Spamming way, 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 way more Naquium. Um, it's actually kind of obscene how much Naquium we need. No, it's not kind of obscene. It's very obscene how much Naquium we need to check off the end of game boxes. Um, uh, we need 10k uh, Deep Space Science Pack 4s to unlock Spaceship Victory. We do have like a 100% uh, productivity bonus here. I'm very seriously considering as late as it is making some prod nines and just get getting rid of all the extra labs so we just have one lab with prod nines in it um it wouldn't make that much of a difference uh i mean it would be significant let's see prod six to prod nine is plus 14 percent to plus 20 percent so what is it six fives uh, I think I did this math before. Yeah, uh, so we gain plus 30%. So instead of plus 109%, we have plus 139%. Um, as it is, we need about 5,000 deep space science packs to do a 10,000 research. Um, yeah, but it's not just spaceship victory that we have to unlock we then have to research factory spaceship 4 factory spaceship 5 which is 4000 to 8000 and then the next one i believe is going to be 16000 uh deep space science pack 4 just to unlock well let me just double check what are we up to 2500 yeah, if we could get it down to 3,500 hull stress for the ship, we would need two more researchers. Um, that is a tall order, though. Both thousand stress would be easy, but I take it the last research for an extra 500 stress is like 16k deep space for, so not fun. Yeah, um, uh, the current one is 4k, we're going to need 8k and 16k, so the one after that would be 32. Thirty-two thousand uh, Deep Space Science Pack 4s. All right, um, how much are we making? It's looking pretty good right now. Actually, it's at the peak of whatever we, what we've ever done, but I don't know how consistent. We have been spamming more antimatter stream. 
we've got three blocks making it now. Um, I thought there was a possibility we'll bottleneck on Plasma Stream, but I don't think it's too likely. Uh, I want to wait and see a little bit on that. This one's completely full, so I seriously doubt it. Antimatter stream is completely full here. Okay. I think we've I think we've moved that bottleneck. Um it may be the case that we actually just need more than one block to fill a ship with antimatter stream. Uh, I did say a while ago I was going to use this space for that. Um, but I didn't get around to it. Let's bring our construction spiders down. They're not going to cross any spaceships. And uh, copy paste these. Oh, uh, sure. I'll just copy paste the settings for the clamps and then the inserters. I mean, not inserters, the uh, combinators. Oh, I forgot. This has liquid rocket fuel. Um, we can pretty much ignore that. So antimatter stream is going to go here. Make it a requester. Station name and go. Let's see. Back on Nalvis. I think we've only got. Oh no, we've got two. Yeah, we've actually got two. Um, two blocks to unload antimatter stream here. Alright, I think we might actually want another ship to move it. I think we've only got two of them. This one is... What's it doing? Waiting to land on Nalvis? Uh, Waiting to land on Nalvis. Okay. So, did I not set this up properly? Or can it not fit there or something? Or does it not have the right clamp settings? It should definitely have the same clamp settings. 3005 Antimatter tank for two. Three thousand five. Three thousand five. So why is it not landing? Um. What? I don't understand. Why is it not landing? The combinator is switched on, right? Also, I thought there was... Did it just happen to take off? Yeah, it did. 
so I haven't forgotten that there's a third ship or something. Um, hold on a sec. Go back to here. And this is 3005. Never seen this happen. If the ship just automatically took off, uh, it, this combinator and everything should definitely already be set up correctly. Switched on three thou five, three thou five. This is really weird. It just doesn't... Oh, I have to press engage. Oh, this doesn't have a speed signal. Well, there's your problem. If, if it had the speed signal, I wouldn't have had to press engage. How did that happen? What's the console saying? The console is saying, give me a speed signal or press engage. What, then how did it get here? This one as well? Hmm. I don't remember how that happened. And I'm surprised that this ship is here, if that's the case. All right. Uh, hopefully pumping antimatter stream in here and here at the same time uh, will be enough to keep our ships filled. One would hope. Fantastic. I would love to believe we're getting to the point where a second Naquitite Naquin plate shuttle would be a good idea, but no, we're way off that. Um, I don't really need to be carrying quite so much spaceship floor. And I would definitely like some reactors. Actually, let me just go pick these up. About your knack shortage, is it worth mining in a system local to Calidus for less travel time? Uh... Well, my first thought was that I would get my Naquitite from Stardew, but there's so little here. Um, I think I still have it marked. The first Naquitite we ever found was... Oh, was here, actually. I think the start point is here-ish. Uh, but yeah, just to give you some idea. Uh, we got 10k Naquitite right there. And, and and I didn't find any other Naquitite looking around in Stardew. Um, I could go to Melancholia. I might have to bite the bullet and set up another... Well, the thing is, we're currently... We're currently bottlenecking on antimatter for Naquitite. Um, I think. We're getting pretty close to closing that bottleneck, if if that is still the case. But most of the antimatter goes into the ship taking off from Nalvis or uh, from Nalvis. But yeah, I do have uh, Melancholia that we could go to for more Naquitite throughput. But I don't know. I don't feel like I should have to. 
Like, we've got four entire blocks dedicated to processing Nacrotite already. Melancholia, what a downer. I know, right? Alright, let's go get our... Uh, reactors. What is this bot doing? Good grief. Gonna have to fix that first. Also missing some Naquium heat pipe. Oh, this was for our draft endgame ship. Which turned out to have way too few engines. What kind of hull stress are we looking at here? 3417. Hmm. I feel like that is not significantly smaller than this ship. Does making it thinner give us less hull stress or something? Hmm. How many engines did the endgame ship have? 28. And this has 16. 1, 2, 3, 4... I seriously doubt we could add the same number of engines on and still keep the hull stress under 3,500. It's as if the game is gently trolling you before you're able to finish. I wouldn't call it gentle. Like, un unless we just... Unless we just keep going in a loop of building more mines, more ships, more antimatter to support the ships, more everything else to support the antimatter, and so on, uh, we've pretty much reached the stage of of like an idle game. But there's foe and Estra to play with. All right, we've got our reactors now. Let's take them back to Foenestra. And let's also add I'm just going to turn those around. Um, I think I already set this up, actually. Yeah. So... One of our spaceships... Oh, the pumps are off by one. One of our antimatter ships can... Come here now. Fantastic. And I'll just do something like this. Uh, and you can see pretty clearly that that's going to be one of the antimatter haulers. Very cool. them all with you. I still haven't gotten rid of these old thermofluid builds. I should probably do that. Alright. Uh, in we go to our player ship. Back to Foenestra. Are we moving? Yeah, we're moving. Alright. 
And I should probably add a tag here. Let's see if that is starting to saturate antimatter stream down here. Uh, looking good, actually. I'm sure there's going to be, yep, quite a few fluid tankers bringing antimatter stream right now. Once again, space elevators would make this very, very different. We wouldn't have to spend, what, a tenth as much antimatter stream um, to get these ships to go back and forth. I heard there's a maintenance cost for the space elevators but I think it's going to be trivial compared to the benefits. And that goes for the logistical challenge of bringing the parts that you need to uh, maintain it as well. Alright. Um, I guess we may as well start spamming even more mines for Nequitite. Um, we can scan Melancholia. Did I finish clearing... There's still hostiles on, on this planet. Wow. Not a whole lot of them, it would appear. Let's make sure we're still beaming them. We are still beaming. Uh, we do mostly have the planet cleared, but my goodness, I forgot about this for quite a while. Uh, and we're still clearing it out. But yeah, this is going to be, if we have to get more Vita Melange at some point, uh, this is going to be where we get it. It's literally the closest, uh, well, almost literally the closest planet or moon that we could possibly have as far as an interstellar destination goes. I've seen a few people do it like Nalvis Outposts and train the Knack to one pickup. One, train the Knack to one pickup. What do you mean by that? Um, let's see, Hyperion. I don't think we were trying to clear any of these. Keto Bar is where we get our Iridite these days. It was Irene, and we did clear Irene. I guess we could start clearing Orpheus. It's going to cost us UPS while that happens. I, alternatively, I could just hope that we never need another iron planet. Use trains to send it to one ship loading point. Oh, as... Well, that would actually have less throughput. Um, we're just skipping the trains here. Spaceships are always... Uh, spaceships have a practically unlimited um, potential throughput because you can literally just swap them in and out in a second. Um, a, train, a train can only bring less than four chests of resources a spaceship can swap in and out like this is uh this is 70 chests of naquitite and it just appears and instantly disappears or it takes like two seconds if that to disappear as soon as it's ready to go uh a train definitely can't compete with that What's going on here? Missing required fluids? That shouldn't be possible. Uh, Alright, could you please launch? Don't 
Do I need to wait a second? There we go. Rub Band Rambo, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So, the ships are supposed to check that they've got 25k sulfuric acid before they leave. And 25k is definitely enough to fill 70 chests of Naquatite. Have a good stream, thank you. So I don't understand how that happened. Now I have to inspect every single mine to see if it's happened again somewhere. This one's totally fine. In fact, it's been accumulating excess. Wait, did I not? I'm sure. Yeah, no, I did include storage here. So there's no difference. This one's obviously working. If we see bots moving, we know it's working. Yeah, I really don't know how that happened. Only one ear to listen today. Oh no. Get well soon, Evil Plur. Good to see you again, by the way. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright. How is our scan going for Melancholia? We've got a little tiny Naquatite mine in the middle. 1.7 mil, not much throughput though. Hmm. I could go for some train outposts out here. Might be a bit easier. If, if we're going to scale it up to the point that we ended up doing with Stardust, it'll be easier than having point defenses to have uh, media defense installations. And... Maybe we could have a train network bring Naquatite in. And then we don't have to worry about, is it worth mining X, Y, or Z small patch? The other thing is, we're going to have to add more blocks to process Naquatite. We're going to have to have more blocks for ships to come in. We're going to need even more antimatter stream. Although, maybe we have reached well beyond the point of saturation now. I would certainly hope so. Yeah, it's looking pretty good now, actually. It's looking very good. Maybe I should have had the... Uh, Nacrotite... Not Nacrotite, Antimatter Stream ships landing over here instead. It was just an idea. The stream I saw it on had a much higher density of Nacrotite. Like 20 outposts for the same amount of blocks you have. Just a thought. Yeah. Um, when I started building out at Stardust, I thought... You know... We'll make two or three of these mines for Naquatite and call it a day. But then we just need more and more and more and more and more to get anything approaching a decent throughput for this stuff. We've actually got four belts of it coming in already. Um, as you can see with the rate calculator. And for Naquatite, I mean, Naquatite is mined very slowly. 
you would think this was a hell of a lot, but in terms of what the end game is asking for, not really. I should probably check that something fundamental isn't getting ready to break while we're not looking. I did have to conf- oh. Oh, that's a lot of coal. Yeah, I thought we fixed this already. Let's see. 92,000 coal. I think we might actually have to update our voiding system. As weird as that sounds. We, we might need more throughput to get rid of the resources that we're overflowing on from core mining. Because we get multiple resources whenever we get it. And if we fill up on coal, for example, we're not getting any of this other stuff. If we didn't physically have to store this uh, stuff somewhere, we would probably just have, like, a practically unlimited amount of each resource quite a long time ago. Except for Naquitite, of course. All right, plate to go burn. Oh, I should probably name, uh, name this station so that we can see exactly how many trains are coming to pick up Nequim plate, but I'm sure it's going to be three, like every time. Okay, that's actually really good to see. Before the ship is even on its way back, we've got um, 4.9k Naquium plate here. Uh, considering the ship can carry 960 times 16, it's going to be about a third ready to go by the time the ship gets back. So we really do have a lot of, um, we do have a lot of Naquium throughput, it's just still not enough if we want that research done before the heat death. Alright, let's park down here I suppose. I can't see the scaffolding. Why is it so dark? And here we go with our reactors. Uh, we will need to give it a little push to get started with this system. I forgot to bring more heat. Oh no. Oh, no. Wait, no, I do have... I have the long heat pipes, but not the short ones. No! Wait, wait, wait. I've got 20 Naquium plate, but that's not going to be enough. Um, I was able to make five of these earlier, and we needed 12. Oh, tragedy. I can't believe I've got a stack of long Naquium heat pipe and I just need literally two regular Naquium heat pipe. I bet that cargo rocket idea is looking pretty good now. No. To hell with cargo rockets. Also, I think I do actually need... I actually need like a stack, almost, of um, Naquium heat pipe. So 
so it wasn't going to be close. I think, yeah, I would have requested 12 of these and not realized I needed a lot more. Now you only need two more? Not quite. Um, yeah. There's, there's one over here. Uh, we could partially get this thing working already. Oh, wait. No, this is fine. So we've got water, we've got fuel. Yeah, I just haven't given it the signal to get started yet. Um, none of these. Actually, just literally one. My temp heat exchanger is going to work if I switch this on now. So let's maybe not do that. Empty mat to canister. Yeah, no, even now I wouldn't want to send a cargo rocket here. I don't want the mess. And I would also have to, like, request this rare exotic stuff to be moved to this block. I don't even have it in the mall downstairs. And I don't particularly... Okay, we do have a surprising amount of Naquium in the mall. Should probably do something about that. Um, but yeah. 75% success rate? Take those days odds any day of the week? No. Uh, Alright, so what else are we missing? It's literally just the heat pipe. Okay. Back we go then. I like the extra irony that I just happen to have 50 Naquim heat pipe long. Very cool. If it was like heat pipe plus one Naquim plate or something. I would definitely be able to... Well, no, I would only be able to make 20. That would not give me enough. What kind of... sites do we have... over here? That's a decent one. Only decent, though. It's not great. We've got a lot of little Naquitite outposts here. The thing that, uh, the thing that I'm worried about if I go to the trouble of making even more Naquitite throughput is all of a sudden, again, we're going to need way more, uh, Vitamelange. All of a sudden, we're going to need way more antimatter stream, and it just goes on and on. Speaking of which, we're still clearing this. Oh, the glaive has reached the area with the most biters, or almost has anyway. Soon, TM. Uh, Kate, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so... Yeah, we didn't even get enough... Um, I should do a shortcut for Foenestra. Foenestra... Here we go. Um, how about here? Wait, what? I thought I just did control shift zero. Uh, how do I control right click delete? Okay. Oh, an extra. Thought it was control shift. 
It is apparently not. Create a new pin. Go on, Estra. Hotkey. You can do four. All right, cool. Spaceship victory is half done. Yeah, it's also just enough that, like, by the time I significantly increase the throughput of Naquitite, we're going to be, like, what, a quarter, a third of the way to just finishing? I think next time I want to unlock Necrotite mining as early as possible and do it well before I've got the uh, science or whatever to consume it. Speaking of science. I wonder if I could come up with an even better... way to do this. To get stuff from the robot network into an LTN train as quickly as possible, but with no uh, with no chance of having the inserters stick out at the end. What would really be nice is if we could change the characteristics of logistic chests dynamically. Not just set requests, but like change it from a requester chest into a storage chest into an active provider chest, for example. That would make it... Well, that would definitely make it so that we could just have uh, 12 chests of input for each cargo wagon. So the way this one works is we set requests up here once the train gets here. Uh, we use a latch. It starts out with these inserters that put it into the steel chests being switched on. Um, the only... Why, why isn't this triggering? Oh, I think I know why. Yeah, whoops. Wait, what? Did I typo it again? I did not typo it again. We've got 32k... Huh? Don't tell me one of these has like 199 chemical science packs in the last stack. No? What the? We've got 32k chemical packs. Negative 32,001 from the constant combinator. Oh, wait. I did it twice. Oh. Oh. Well, <laughs> well there's your problem. I just forgot that I'd already given it this signal. Yeah. Thinking out loud but ignoring the inserters over the train. If they insert junk, can we not read the request for the train and have one filter inserter per wagon to whitelist the request to empty any junk to an active provider? The trouble is, if the inserter is sticking out before the train comes in, um, when the train arrives, the junk gets inserted, and then from the uh, logistic train stop output, 
instead of just receiving a signal of what the train is supposed to have, we also receive a signal of what the train arrived with. And, and we can't, like, get rid of that. So it makes it look like the train is supposed to have that junk in it. Um, yeah, so the way this currently works is train arrives, logistic train stop output sets requests, uh, and then just because we can't set requests and read contents, we shove those into steel chests. Um, once the steel chests are full, we trigger a latch, and then we do a precise load. The way we know that they're full is, despite the different stack sizes, is we say... If anything equals negative one, uh, trigger the latch, and then we have uh, negative signals of like 8001, for example, um, for whatever resource. Um, huh. I didn't think of that, but it's working itself out. Uh, we have stack filter inserters here with a blacklist of whatever is supposed to be in the chest. So that's getting rid of the um, blue science packs. And because I limited these chests here, it's never going to insert the wrong type of stuff. Well, not that it would do that anyway, since we're also using set requests up here. The trouble with this build is we can only fit four. Um, we can only fit four chests per cargo wagon. Uh, if we had large containers, well. I mean, yeah, we could definitely do better with large containers. If we had, like, the 6x6 containers, we could have container here, uh, requester here, purple chest here, requester here, here, purple chest here. What I haven't thought about too much yet is... Now that we know how to figure out what's inside a ship that's using set requests, uh, like we're doing at Stardust. Would it be feasible to use that to get our trains loaded that way? The trouble with this is we need to be able to account for everything that is not in the ship, and then subtract that from the logistic network. So, for something like this mall, uh, we might be in trouble if there's other stations as well, but we would have to read literally the entire, like, all of these storage chests, for example, we'd have to read the contents of. It's not so good in a block like this. Maybe in some other places. Okay, what's our ETA? 30 seconds? Fantastic. And I've already got my requests set up. Don't need any more supercomputers for now. I've just casually got six deep supercomputers sitting in my inventory. What a waste. Uh, I was going to say I'm pretty sure this is a waste as well, but if we caught it... Okay, that's definitely at least two trainloads of junk data cards that were dropped off here. Yeah, this might not be as overkill as it looks. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
Um, it looks like there isn't actually a problem with the way we output Crynite and blank data cards. Oh, broken data card should be net negative. Yeah, we need, um, well, we probably just need a speed beacon over here, to be honest. Maybe I forgot, maybe I just sort of forgot the speed beacon. Let's bring our spiders down this way. Luckily, they're really close by because I forgot that I was going to deconstruct this part. Glad I checked on this. So this side is blocked because we're only using half of this belt and that's blocked like so. And because this part is slower than it should be, um, we're bottlenecking on net positive broken data cards. Wide area beacon, go. The bots come in from as far away as possible. Fantastic. Alright. Now we're net negative. Unbroken data cards. That should sort itself out. It's looking like it's going to sort itself out surprisingly quickly. Yeah, there's already room for the blank data cards to move here. Did I set this as a high priority? Yep, good. Okay, that took way less time to correct itself than I thought it would. Good to see. Why is this one not active? Because there's no cryonite. Why is there no cryonite? There's plenty of cryonite. Uh... Oh! Oh, that's something I hadn't thought of. Okay, what's our net output of cryonite here? Uh, more than one belt. Hmm. So the way we're recycling cryonite... Um... We're keeping these inserters from swinging whenever there's cryonite detected here, but we're only putting it on half a belt. Yeah, we need to merge this back in properly. Um, it's a little awkward. Let's see, this goes to here, and this goes to here. Therefore... I think we'll merge it in like this. So turn that around. Turn that around. Actually... Well, let me do this first. Output priority... Well, let's start with this. Uh, input priority left side. Output has to go to the right. And I think we also probably want to belt balance. Yeah, because each side can do more. Uh, e each side will give us more than half a belt um, of output. Actually, are we already balancing that way? Yeah, we are. Okay, so we can probably just bring this straight in here. 
Um, so this will go here. Put that back, I think. And this will go here. And we prioritize the recycled input. I'll just get rid of that. Don't worry about it. Hey, Ben Wu. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Can you store the train state as it arrives and gets junked? Then subtract it from the request. Uh, that's the problem with this thing. Uh, if you have the inserter sticking up before the train gets the, here, the train state, when it arrives, the train state is considered to be including whatever was shoved in by the inserters. Um, it actually doesn't check, it, it actually, you, you actually don't get the signal um, for the logistic train stop output until like a tick or two after those items are inserted into the train. All right, that seems to be working pretty well. Uh, I guess... Hmm. I guess because of the stuff coming in here and coming in here, we don't super strictly prioritize this. But because these... Because these are all in sync, these inserters, and this has to wait for this, and this has to wait for this, um, it actually works out pretty well. If there was a bit less space uh, to store this cryonite on the belt, that might actually be a problem. But it's looking pretty solid now. Why is there no cryonite? Oh, there we go. The stack inserters are misbehaving. I'm seeing some of these machines switch off occasionally, and then I check on it, and it's just... The, in the input hasn't bothered yet. I think it's because we have a few outputs that are waiting, but it's not enough that it should stop it. So this one is probably going to accumulate some blank data cards and then not input. No, this one doesn't have an output problem, but it went blank anyway. Uh, I don't understand why it's taking a break sometimes. Okay, it was very briefly 10 blank data cards. Wait, are you telling me... We've got two stack inserters to output this stuff. And it's still... Just because it lets one resource accumulate... That's a little bit annoying. I don't think we can do much better with them in rows like this. Okay. Um, what do we come back for? Heat pipe. We are 50% of the way through Spaceship Victory, at least. 
Although, really, Spaceship Victory requires another, like, 30,000. So it's kind of a... it's almost like a trick. How did this happen? Oh, right, because I changed it back down to only requiring 160 stack threshold. We'll just have to wait for the next shuttle, which these days doesn't take that long. In fact, it's about to launch. Well, I say it's about to launch. I don't see another train bringing plate just yet. Uh, how's our ingot production been? Uh, a little shaky. It's crashing now. But the area under the graph has definitely improved. Okay. We got our... We've only got 27. Heat pipe. Also, we picked up another million antimatter reactors, which is going to cost us. Unless I swap this back before the system resets. Where are you taking that? Oh, those are cubes, actually. Alright, why do we only have 27 Naquim heat pipe? We need like 40, I believe. Uh, let's see. Uh, how do I... ghosts. 33. We're so close. We're actually... We're literally one off right now. Unless we're about to get some more plate delivered, which we are. Fantastic. Oh, that makes multiple? Or did we get some delivered at the same time? We got some delivered at the same time. Alright, cool. Let's go back again. And now that this is working properly, at like 99% efficiency. Uh, let's finally get rid of these old locks. And I might not, I might just not even worry about this fluid here. It's not worth our time. Alright, it looks like this is enough to keep up with our junk data card production, I think. Uh, let's head back to Foanestra. Are there any YouTube videos prior to part 46? My apologies, no. Oh yeah, I was thinking we might actually need to increase the rate of trashing this old stuff. Because I checked back here and we've still got way too much coal in these chests. And it's actually the same across multiple uh, processing blocks. I could just make another storage area for coal. Uh, we probably have a storage area I'm not using. Yeah, we've got like two of them. That is a short-term solution. Um, let's do that. Coal. 
full stack size is 50. And I doubt we need to make two of these right now. That's actually all we have to do with this setup. Let's have a look at our candidates for Necrotite mines. So we got 2.7 mil there. 2.9, 4.8, uh, 4.0, that's a good start. The trouble with trains with Nacrotite is the stack size is so bloody small. Hmm, this is looking a lot more sparse than I expected so far. We might have to go a bit further from the center. Speaking of sparse, let's check in on our biters. There's still quite a few left, but we will be able to trim surface on this planet in the not-so-distant future. Uh, I also need to make... Hmm. I was considering coming here to upgrade a bunch of these solar panels, or just add more. 60 gigawatts. We apparently need eight dimensional anchors um, just to support Foenestra. I don't know if we're allowed to have more than one dimensional anchor in the same place or if it wants us to, pu to pull together 60 gigawatts of power at each sun. Let's see, uh, 60,000 over 12.1. We need almost 5,000. We need like 20 blocks of solar panels like this, just to support one of these anchors. What's going on here? Is this a mod? I have played Factorio for like six hours. Yes, it is a mod. Uh, sweet play. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It is a very, very, very big mod uh, that completely overhauls the game. Or rather, adds a lot to it. Actually, with point six, uh, with the update, uh, I don't really know how much the how much it transforms in the early game as well. Okay. Uh, I think now's probably a good time to take a little break. Let's fire up some words on stream. And we'll finally get the second power plant going at Foenestra after the break. Let's grab this. Hope you're well too. Thank you. Also, Arif Holloway, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Alright, in about 30 seconds we're going to start some words on stream. I'm going to be back in a few minutes, and uh, good luck and have fun.
Okay. That you'll do. Good job. Let's pause this. And back to space exploration. And are we at Foenestra? Yes, we are. Fantastic. Okay, let's anchor over here again. Uh, more than a little bit further out than I meant to. It's fine. This is fine. More importantly, we've got our heat pipe now. Alright, if this isn't enough power for Foenestra, I will be mildly upset. Let's put in our fuel. And there goes our heat. Uh, it will take at least another swing of the inserters to get to 5,000 degrees. Um, and after that, we'll be able to see... Well, I guess there's no harm in firing up the ring while we wait for that. Uh, it idles. It idles at 10 gigawatts. And then when we trip this thing... Uh, there was an energy spike, and it immediately shut down with our 11 gigawatt reactor here. But hopefully adding this one down here is going to be enough. Um, what do we got? Six of these on each side? Yeah, we've actually made the same size reactor. Uh, we've got a few more high temp heat exchangers, actually. Let's see. I think I calculated. Let's see. One, two, four times six. We would need 6,144 fluid per second. Um, 564. Two, which would be 11 of these and I wouldn't be a fan of the asymmetry so we went for 12 uh, with this design our target is a bit lower and we just went for extra turbine generators alright heat is building up we got 2.8k fantastic uh, got one anchor, which is at Calidus, requiring 60 bloody gigawatts, um, just to run this thing. Uh, I think I calculated we need, what, 20? 20 blocks of solar panels like this, just to run one anchor. I don't know if I have to set up anchors at different locations for this to count, or if we could just spam them in one place. Uh, I don't love the thought of building more antimatter reactors to support the anchors. I don't love the thought of having to build that much solar pa uh, that many solar panels either. Um... But I don't want to push our luck with how quickly we're making antimatter canisters. Uh, I guess we could... I mean, I could definitely make more of these, but... Will antimatter stream become a problem? Probably not, considering that the output is totally saturated every time I check on it lately. And it shut down. Why did it shut down? Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? What? What happened to our power? We've got no heat? Nani? Uh, oh right, 
I forgot. Um, I forgot I set it to not put any fuel in for a while. My bad. Alright, so this one has heated up. Fantastic. Very, very good. Uh, I should probably check all the fluid input-output on these things. It's looking excellent, actually. I'm not seeing any of the outputs piling up at all. Uh, this looks to be a... Oh, well, we got 5,000... Recycled 5,000 degree steam piling up. That's totally fine. The 500 degree... Goes to here. As long as it's not piling up in these uh, pipes, that should be okay. And the water's looking really, really good as well. Hughes Mike, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, this this design is looking excellent, actually. I mean, we already tested it a bit with that spaceship, but yeah, having the having the fluid go just immediately back to where it belongs instead of having to bottleneck through spots like this uh, is looking much, much better. Alright, so we have like 23 gigawatts, maybe? That we can use here? Let's see if it doesn't crash the moment that we flip this thing. Oh, that just went... Oh, hello. Oh no, please... Please don't tell me we need another 70 gigawatts to make this thing work. Surely, surely you jest. You're kidding. Is this a joke? Am I on candid camera? This is a joke, right? Always just a bit more? It's always just an obscene amount more. Now that's a lot of power. Yeah, yeah it is. That's another seven of these. Good grief. Just tuned in, what's the newest discovery about the ring? Apparently it wants another 10 gigawatts for every single movable component. Another 80 gigawatts, 90 in total. That's not counting the 60 times 8 gigawatts that we need to pour into the anchors everywhere, but at least we can do that with solar power. Can you imagine if we set up 10 gigawatts of power with beamed power here, and then we discovered this? Absolutely disgusting. This is actually, like, comedy by way of exaggeration. Build for a hundred just to be safe? Oof. I don't even want to anymore. This is just... I say we... I say we blast into orbit. Saturate it with nukes. It's the only way to be sure. Beaming at 0.03% efficiency? Yeah. Good grief. Alright. Um, well. We can try 
building like a hundred gigawatt antimatter reactor, but scaling that is not as easy as it sounds. Or was it? It was like 0.034%, I believe. We can check. Um, where is this? Oh yeah, we're not really using... Oh, we are using that, actually. What about this one? Can, can we not find a spare... Alright, this will do for now. Oh, and Estra. Uh, energize. 0.34%. That's not a whole lot. Other than Spaceship Victory, is there third or more? Uh, I don't know. I do not know. Well, I'm just trying to think if we try to scale this indefinitely. Like this part, we can definitely just keep copying across forever. I don't know where the limits are going to be for getting heat out there. Hmm. We would have to give up on these pipes, but that wouldn't be a problem. might even just jump into the sandbox to find out exactly how much power Foenestra needs because this joke is getting old. I could literally just build another seven of these reactors. That'd probably be a lot easier. Uh, I do worry for how quickly that's going to consume our antimatter. We can just switch it off in the meantime. Alright, fine. We're just going to make seven more of these. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And that means another, what, 2,800 Naquim cubes? And that's not counting the heat pipe? Good grief. Do I really want to delay Spaceship Victory that much more to play with the re uh, wedding ring? I also have to build just a stupid amount of power to support the uh, anchors. Is it worth making Naquium solar panels? We need a cube for each solar panel. That's that's a lot. 255 cubes. Um, just to save one block of Holmium solar panels. That's not really worth it, I don't think. You can play with it even after the spaceship victory. Yeah, but it delays the spaceship victory. Like this up here, this is not our spaceship victory. We need another, what, 24,000 deep space science pack fours? Um, and this is only 10k. So we need, like, 
about 11 times, if I recall correctly. 4,000 plus 8,000 is 12,000. Uh, plus 16,000. It's actually like 24,000. Yeah, it's... The remaining uh, research bar here for Spaceship Victory is about 1 11th of what it's going to take to unlock enough hull stress for our victory ship. How many flat panel 2s have you produced in total? Yes. Uh, 219,000. That is... that That's at least several. I don't know, I kind of want to design a bigger... If we're going to do this, I want a, a more efficient power plant. So that it doesn't cost us as much Naquium. And also so we're just not copy-pasting this seven more times. Of course, if I design and build it here... I, I was very confident in this design, with good reason, but especially building it bigger, there's a risk that heat doesn't get where it's supposed to, or fluid throughput is not what we imagine. And then we spend a significant amount of time building a bad reactor. So let's imagine, well, let's, let's try and imagine building one reactor to rule them all. I mean, to power the ring. Uh, we're looking at at least 90 gigawatts. So that is, we can only really do two by two, uh, two by X, uh, unless we want to manually put in the fuel ourselves. Which is not totally out of the question. I mean, we have to manually do things up here, right? I don't think... No, it does have a combinator attachment. Hmm. Um... Yeah, let's say we're doing 2 by x Uh, with a neighbor bonus of... it won't tell us... here we go. Yeah, plus 300% in the middle, plus 200% on the outside. Um, so we're looking at quad... Uh, 1600 megawatts times x. So 90 over 1.6. We need about 56 reactors in the middle? Jesus. One point six gigawatts. Yeah. Ninety gigawatts over one point six. Uh, if we ignore the ones on the edge, we would need fifty six point two five reactors. Can you extract the heat from them if they're surrounded? Yes. Yeah, they're just like giant heat pipes. Uh, Chucky, good to see you again. Well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so this is... 24... 48. Our reactor would have to be about this big. Are you joking? Is the mod so big slash cluttery that it's tanking as FPS, or does the game naturally... No, the game normally runs at 60. Um, there's just so much um, going on in this save. Uh, it's, a, it, it's a mixture of the sheer size of our factory, and the number of outposts and spaceships and stuff that we have to have to support it. 
Um, I definitely... I mean, I've been saying for a while that if I were to play this again, I would build smaller from the start. But look at how long it's taking to get the end game research done. Uh, putting aside the fact that it's a third of normal game speed, like, it, it takes a lot to support four belts worth of Naquium, uh, Naquitite throughput. This is actually not mining right now, so that four belts is a lie. Um, yeah, we're getting less than four belts of Naquitite throughput right now. And it's taking about 700 years to tick off all the boxes to finish the game. It's not just visual frames per second, the game now literally runs at one-third speed, yes. Um, so if we had spaceships, ignoring our like one or two other slow outposts that we have for Naquitite, uh, if we had spaceships here all the time, so that was there was no spaceship bottleneck, we'd be getting uh, four belts of Naquitite. Um, realistically, what are we consuming? 8.6 per minute? A thousand, that is? Over the last hour... 7.5 thousand per minute. So about 125 per second. That's almost three belts. Is there only so much you can do before the game engine decides to say no? Uh, basically, yes. But yeah, it's not the game engine. It's, it's bottlenecking on something or other on your computer. Uh, RAM speed is a really big bottleneck for Factorio, and with the motherboard I have, I can't go over, what is it, 2933? Uh, going to dual channel made a really big difference, but there's just way too much going on in space exploration. Um, yeah, I don't think... Well, we can try and do something in between, like a, a bigger version of this, but not try to do 56 in one go. Damsel, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for the raid. How's your stream today? Welcome, raiders. Hello, friendo. Hello to you as well. Uh, we were just calculating how many uh, antimatter reactors it would take to power this monstrosity. Uh, and we've got every reason to think that it'll take at least 90 gigawatts. Stream was great. Got Vulcanite. Feel quite accomplished. Nice. Yeah, so... Uh, spoiler alert, uh, Foenestra tells you a bold-faced lie, saying that it requires 10 gigawatts of power. Uh, the console, the power platform, requires 10 gigawatts of power. As soon as you flick one of these, uh, which you're going to have to flick eight of them, uh, it consumes another 10 gigawatts. I recall that, yeah. So I was just doing the math. If we need 90 gigawatts to power it, and we have a huge reactor of 2 by x uh, antimatter reactors. Which is, this is like the most aggressive power production thing that we have available in the game. Uh, 1.6 gigawatts per reactor that's in the middle. We need... Uh, no, that's not right. 90 over 1.6. Yeah, we need 56 antimatter reactors in the middle, roughly, if we were to make one giant antimatter reactor system to power this. 
that's just I think that's kind of obscene personally I powered the console and then was like fuck this yes absolutely I mean this 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 feels like a this feels like a cruel joke honestly um, I could copy paste this seven more times or we could try and make something a bit more efficient so it doesn't just consume all of our uh, antimatter canisters in like five seconds. But if I were to... Um, if I were to try to build one reactor to power the whole thing, uh, it would literally be like about this big. Yeah. Let me just try to load up my 0.5 say to see how much power slash reactors I used, by all means. Uh, but yeah, I think if we try to go that big, we're going to run into problems uh, with the heat pipes or something. Um, I do quite like this arrangement that I came up with. Um, where we pump water back in here, and here, and here, and so on. Um, it's been much, much, much better for keeping the fluids under control. See above? What are we seeing? You wouldn't lose much from just copying it. Yeah, well, we would be consuming antimatter stream faster than we need to to get the same amount of power, so I'd like to go a bit bigger if I can, especially because uh, I, I don't think it's going to take that much. Actually, I should probably try starting from this. And... I wonder, okay, if we add four of these on this side, four of these on this side, um, we're going to need, heat pipe like so, or like so. Get rid of those. Yeah, there should be room for the input-output here. We can do this over here, maybe? Not quite. Well, we're just measuring at this point. Um, don't actually need that part. What would be the most elegant solution here? These two and these two might look a bit better. We can't do that. That doesn't... Why, wait, why is that not consistent? This goes here, this goes here. This goes here, this goes here, to the outside, to the inside. Oh, I think I did it like this, over there. There's no way we can fit this part here. I think it's just going to have to look something like this. Um, I think I like this a little bit better, to be honest. And then, how much power are we getting? Meant to do something and totally spaced it. Okay. No worries. Um, so we're getting 1600... Uh, 1.6 megawatts, gigawatts rather, times 
12. Uh, 19.2 plus 4 times uh, 1.2. So that is 24 gigawatts. We would need four of these. Also, we need more um, high temp heat exchangers to support it. Uh, 24 gigawatts divided by 560 megawatts is... that doesn't sound right. Uh, that's 2.4 gigawatts. 42, 43 high temp heat exchangers? That sounds about right, considering we already had 24, and we knew that was a bit excessive. So, we would have to double... How much scaffolding do I have? I'm sure I have plenty up here. She did not go in the thing. She did not go in the thing. Alright, uh, so we're gonna have to stretch this part out twice as far, but I think with this design for the fluid part, it's actually gonna be totally fine. I forgot to go in the thing. <laughs> Is this an in-joke? I'm scared. Oh, my inventory's full as well. Scaffolding, go burr. Yeah, I could... I'd, I'd be much happier making four of these than, like, seven more of these. No one on the, um, temples? One of the temples. I was gonna go in the one on my Vulcanite planet. Wait, you never went in the mysterious structures in your last playthrough? Or just this playthrough? Forgot and flew away. Never. <laughs> okay. Oh no. Well, uh, there may or may not be a surprise waiting for you there. Uh, how many is this? Six? We need it to be twelve. That's kind of a lot. Uh, if we're going for twenty-four gigawatts, was it? Uh, we would need about 24 high temp turbine generators. So, six. Yeah, we're, we're literally just doubling this. It feels weird. Um, I know we went a bit under, like we, we went a bit over on this design with the uh, high temp heat exchanges. Um, but to literally exactly double the antimatter reactors and gain some efficiency, and then for everything else, the ratio, we're just doubling everything else. It feels kind of strange. But I do realize that we get diminishing returns with our additional efficiency with these things. Powering up the gate? Uh, attempting to. Are you doing this secret after the spaceship? Um, I don't know. We've got, like, 24,000 Deep Space Science Pack 4s that we need. Um, the, the amount of research that we need to finish Spaceship Victory, we need about 10 times that to unlock enough hull stress uh, to win with Spaceship Victory, so it's going to be a slog. Um, but first, 
me get rid of this part. So this much we're definitely doing. We need six of these for each quarter. Four thousand sized ship is feasible. Yeah, uh, we did a design in editor extensions. Um, I got it down to thirty-seven hundred and seventy. Um, I think thirty-five hundred is probably possible, maybe. Um, but it would be very difficult to squeeze it down to that. Um, but yeah, this this thing will get spaceship victory. At first I built something a bit more slender, but then we found that we needed like, what, 30% more engines uh, to reach 250? So uh, I tried adding engines like up here, but the efficiency was like 64%, so I said no to that. Lol, imagine planning ahead. <laughs> I mean, we're currently just tacking on more power to do Foenestra, so I can't really. My victory ship was a shit show. I saw your victory ship, it was beautiful. Very nice. Lovely. Perfect. No, no... No notes. That's very kind. <laughs> um, I mean, it got the job done, right? You did have to make a few changes to get it there, but that's... That's the game. Uh, I shouldn't even bother filling these out, because when I flip them. Wait, what? Okay, this looks normal, but when I do something like this... Hold on. When did flipping... Oh. Oh, it's rotating is fine, but flipping is not. Flipping makes the long Naquium pipe get confused. Okay, good to know. Boanestra isn't a very planable victory? Yeah, I guess not. I mean, how twisted would you have to be to look at this and say, well, obviously we need 100 gigawatts, not 10. That's also part of the downside of playing spoiler-free. I had no idea what a standard victory ship might look like, yeah. Uh, I was going to avoid any kind of spoilers, but I couldn't really resist seeing you finish it. Um, I guess we're not doing this part. Also... I can probably just get rid of all of this for a reference. We're just going to design one quarter of it and then copy, paste, and flip it um, for the most part. Okay. Sorry? No, it's fine. No sorry. Alright, so we have... I kind of want to redo the pipes just because this tangled mess is going to mess with my brain. Also, if we've got six of these being fed by twelve of these, maybe we can and should space this out a bit differently. Uh, maybe we could even make a perfect repeating pattern. We could line it up something like this, perhaps. Uh, that can actually be a five. This one, not so much. That could be a three. 
Wait, no, we don't want to connect to that part. Also... We probably want... Well, we could either do, like... Would be four tiles. I've messed with this part before. I don't think there's a way to make it super conveniently line up with all of this other stuff with the long pipes. Uh, a seven here would be a disaster. What if we start with a nine? And we have a three and another three. I could live with that. Except then we don't have a pump. Uh, we could do a seven and a pump. Uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, we're not going to do better than three pipes here. And then... If we copy-paste that... Uh, the five doesn't really work. If we do the long pipe here... I think I do want the long pipe there. I want as few pipe sections as possible here in particular for the water output. And then underground. This would be a bit asymmetrical. This would have an unnecessary bit of pipe. Oh, we could squeeze in some steam storage right here as well. We can even do two of them. I think I am a fan of that. That's actually super convenient. Yeah, I think this is what we'll go for. Cool. So, not only do we have each of these totally self-contained with recycling the 500 degree steam and water, um, but the water comes straight back into the system without going through its own... Uh, without going through some central bottleneck somewhere. You have three regular pipes in a row now? Uh, true. Although, I'm really not averse to storing more 5,000 degree steam here, but, I mean, we've already got 50k there, that's not something we need to worry about. I can actually just drag this over. So you can fit a three pipe in the boilers, yes indeed. That was a long loading time, so the power I used to actually do something when the ring was... a hundred and four large turbines... eight hundred and ninety four gigawatt... of outgoing beam power? Oh my god. <laughs> nice. How beefy is your antimatter canister production? Uh, currently, this is it. We might have to scale it up just a little bit. Because I've been mostly avoiding using antimatter canisters at all. Uh, the only thing that we do have... It's literally just Foenestra and, like, the endgame ship. Which, I need to deconstruct this, actually. Uh, it's fine, we can leave it there for now. Um, but yeah, even the uh, interstellar travel data ship, we're using energy beams. It's just so much easier, less messy, uh, to beam power around. I understand the 0.6 update uh, nerfed the amount of energy that beam receivers can store by quite a lot. Um, but by the sound of it, they still can store a lot of power. Um, 
Alright, I think... So we're not going to be able to do a flip, a copy-paste flip, because uh, these machines won't let us. But what we can do is... I'll, I'll get rid of the heat pipe as well. Actually, not the regular heat pipe. Uh, we remove the turbines and high temp turbine generators. And then it will allow us to flip it. Uh, and then we realize that we've run out of room over here. Perfect. Um, why don't we put this down here for now? And... Oops. This as well. Wait, did I do that the right way around? Yeah, I did. And... Turbine generators... Uh, go this way, actually. Built an entire new planet on mostly hand crafting? Oh no. The game design pushes moles on every planet now. Oh yeah, I heard a little bit about that. That sounds unfortunate. I think I'll still go for outposts that just spit out core fragments, to be honest. I mean, the way I started, uh, the, the, the way I went, uh, that, I, that I tried to design my outposts at the beginning was to make them self-sufficient and export the excess, but that actually required so much, uh, spaghetti, so much more spaghetti than I expected that I didn't go for it again. Four fragments stacked to 20. Maybe I won't play the update. I even discovered a bug because my handcrafting queue was so long. <laughs> wow. Alright, let's move this over. Right about here. We're going to need to go back for Naquim stuff yet again. Um, I might just... What are these stacked to? One. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to need four times 16. We can't even fit... Jesus. We can't even fit the number of reactors that we're going to need to support this in one chest. Good gravy. Let's just request enough to make one of these in one go. Well, we could even push it to 32. Nah, I don't want that many reactors sitting in a construction ship after I've forgotten about it. Heat pipe. Well, let's see. We need four times... Uh, 15 and 8. Uh, so 60. Let's just make that one stack, or two stacks rather. Uh, 16, 32, one stack of this should be fine. Uh, and we're already bringing quite a lot of these. Alright, could you please go back to... Actually, I should take more scaffolding before I send it back. 
that's just going to make the bots have to resupply a lot more of it in one go. Let's just send this back to Nalvis Orbit. Planning on utilizing the patches early on and swapping to core mining builds later when power slash supplies are easier to come by. Probably because internally switching the jetpack... Oh yeah, yeah. The jetpack kills you. It's, uh... What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? You're prestiging yourself every time you use the jetpack. Alright, so I want to... We probably don't need to go this far out. Uh, it's fine. I want to have room for four of these reactors. We'll get rid of these first two. Need to confirm that this works properly first, though. Um, and I also want water to be able to flow through here, just so that it rebalances properly. Probably don't need that part. Probably don't need half as many pipes as these either. Um, I would like to fit the ice machine in here somewhere. How about we put down a Robocop first and see where the middle is. So right about there. And ice machine. Uh, I guess we could just have some water storage in the middle like this. Yeah, that actually makes perfect sense. Where did it go? Here it is. And some tank. Um, the high temp heat exchanges actually store quite a lot of water. I think we only really need this to measure how much water is in the system. The Adventures of Coyote, thank you uh, very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. Adventures of Coyote. How was your stream today, Factorio? Fantastic. In current version, switching the jetpack doesn't reset your crafting progress anymore. That's impressive. Still resets the weapon and discharge defense cooldowns. Do the biters and bots still lose track of you? Awful? Just awful? Oh no. It was amazing to watch, though. Okay. Alright, we're going to melt some ice. And we're going to have, once again, a requester chest for ice. And we're just going to control that by reading from the nearest storage tank. Uh, we don't actually have any robot network over here. Okay, good. Alright, so we have... Uh, we have fuel, we have heat, we have very few heat pipes. I'm sure we won't have trouble getting the heat over here. Um... We are slightly underutilizing the reactors. We have self-contained uh, water, 500 degree steam and water recycling straight back into the system here. So no bottlenecks. I think this is about as confident as I could possibly be that this system will work without testing it first. Uh, let's see where we can fit... Oh, that's one tile off being perfect. If I put the pumps 
uh, if I put the storage containers over here instead, we could do it that way. Of these looks more. Oh, that would probably make more sense. The water would go straight into this storage tank that we're looking at. Alright, so pylon substation could go here, and it would actually touch everything except for that pump on the end. Once again, it's the pumps on the end that's the problem. But we couldn't actually pull it off with one pylon substation anyway. All right, so we may as well put this here and one of these way over here. Um, and then we should theoretically be able to just rotate this. That is a hefty reactor, and we need four of these. Is this the same power from yesterday? Uh, basically, yeah. Nice, thank you. Do you even need the pumps, though? Maybe. Uh, I feel better having them. And the more we keep these empty, the faster the water... Uh, the more easily the water is pumped through here. Um, all right, so I guess we are waiting on our construction ship to bring back uh, antimatter reactors. Do we have everything that we're asking for in this block? We do not. I think it's about time. Antimatter reactor uh, 16. Uh, I think I have the. I might have gotten rid of them. I may as well put the requests for heat pipes here. Without them, it backs itself up. Definitely not from personal experience. Yeah, no. Definitely not. Um, and definitely not from personal experience. Uh, you actually want to keep this more empty than you would think when you're controlling for how much water you put in. Alright. I th uh, we need to set up... I don't actually like red wires on this. Um, I just used the red wires on, because my, my standard on the spaceship consoles has been red wire for input and green to read stuff. Alright, so we can rethink where we put these. I don't think we're going to come up with anything different. Uh, maybe this. That makes sense. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. That's close to as neat as it could possibly be. We could put these over here. I feel like that's gonna... Sort of look a little more consistent. Alright, so we have our outputs, our inputs, we connect them all. Output condition is steam is less than something or other. Uh, I don't know what number I went for over here. Uh, less than 20k. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that's more risking oversupplying steam than it is running out of power. And then read hand contents pulse. And then the input condition is that the output inserter is doing its thing. And then we're going to put these here. Connect those to each other. Um, these go here. Connect those. Same thing down here. And we're going to find one of these steam tanks to pick on. Uh, I guess the one in the middle is as likely as any to be a good indicator, especially because it's connected to all these. Alright, so that's where we read our steam from, and we need one constant combinator to kickstart the whole thing. And that's going to have a signal of magnetic canister. We'll flick that on to input our fuel. Can you explain your input-output smarts again real quick? Yeah, sure. So, if we want to... Oh, also, I want the inputs to have a stack size of 1. So I'll just do that real quick. Uh, let me find our ship, actually. We're doing it here. So, uh, I have a condition to wait till the accumulator drops below 90% before we put uh, fuel in, but instead of triggering it directly, um, we actually say you're allowed to output the used-up uranium fuel cell if the accumulator charge drops below 90%, and you're only allowed to put fuel in when you take out a used up uranium fuel cell. Uh, so here we're reading from the accumulator. If it drops below 90%, we pick up the used up uranium fuel cell. When we pick up the used uranium fuel cell, we read hand contents. When the used uranium fuel cell is detected, we put in another uranium fuel cell. Uh, and that way we've always got either, like, we've got zero here, we've either got something being burned, or there's a used up uranium fuel cell sitting in the reactor. And, yeah, unfortunately we can't read the heat from the reactor directly, so what we can read is something like accumulator charge or steam. How's that different than just allowing it to insert when below a percentage? Because the inserter will put in like 5 fuel, um, which, I mean, at Foenestra it's not going to be a problem really. Uh, this is more out of habit, I suppose. Although, I mean, it would be a problem right now when we're just like, not actually ready to use it. Um, basically, if we used that system, there would be like five uh, antimatter canisters in here right now. It's already wasting fuel. This is at 10,000 degrees, and we're still burning antimatter. Um, but it would be about five times worse if we only put the condition on the inserter. Yes, indeed. It's quite clever. I didn't actually come up with it myself. Uh, the only disadvantage of this is it does need manual intervention to put in some fuel the first time. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that is going to be our reactor. Can 
Can we fit another one to the left? Not quite. We could just forget about using up this space and have, like, a few of these here. That's fine. So I guess we'll wait for the construction ship to get back. We'll finish building this and we'll test it and see if it doesn't have trouble getting heat to the end or water or some sort of blockage somewhere. But... For once, I seriously doubt it. This is this is a really good design right here. For a reactor, you can keep it simpler by having steam storage to prevent it from overheating. Uh, yeah, I do have steam storage, just not... Wait, what? This is at 10,000 degrees. Oh, there's no input water. What the hell? Wait, did we run out of ice? Oh, that's kind of scary. There's a lot of ice up here, but... Um, the ship that I have bringing it back maybe needs an upgrade. Bow and Estra resupply. I think we have one chest... Okay, 9600 ice is a lot of ice, though. But still, maybe we could do better. The container stress is actually significantly below hull stress here. We could probably add a chest. Um, I think we're using this space here. Yep. This is where we resupply this. Maybe I should double this. Oh, I can't put the same... Yes, I can. Uh, water, ice. So it's going to launch when it has... Wait, how did I do this again? I thought it... Oh, yeah, yeah, the negative a million is so that it ignores those. Uh, it's going to launch when we have either... Well, I did this wrong. This was supposed to be antimatter canisters. When it has 2,000 antimatter canisters or two chests of ice, it's going to launch to go back to Foenestra. I think a cargo rocket would require an insane amount of fuel. About 195,000, actually. That's from Nalvis. Not from Nalvis Orbit. Um, alright, do we have... Oh. Oh, that's a lot of antimatter canisters. Alright, more to the point, do we have some more, uh, turbine generators and so on? Uh, actually, no. I think the cargo rocket fuel is based off gravity and not distance. It's a bit of both. It's delta V. Less than I expected, still quite a bit, yeah. I mean... A while ago, well not a while ago, I am using um, liquid rocket fuel to take stuff into orbit. Uh, it actually takes, for some reason, way more liquid rocket fuel. Like, uh, this has about 1.5 times the cargo capacity of a cargo ship, um, but it takes almost 200,000 liquid rocket fuel <laughs> to launch this into orbit. As opposed to like 50,000. Um, but yeah, this little thing, uh, I think it's 750, uh, 768 stacks, and you don't lose any of it, as opposed to the 500 stacks from a cargo rocket. 
and you don't have to use any um, cargo rocket sections, capsules, and so on. Still haven't seen another tick on Spaceship Victory. Uh, we've actually got plenty of... Okay, I wouldn't say we have plenty of Tesseracts, but they are still on the belt here. Uh, we're just missing Naquium processors. Um, I did deprioritize processors because we weren't getting the Tesseracts where we need them. We actually have to fill a train load. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. We have to fill a train full of Tesseracts before processes get made currently. So this would have to be totally saturated with Tesseracts. Uh, why is it picking up 21? Because I dropped the provide stack threshold. Hmm. So... This needs to be totally saturated before we get any processes. And then we'd probably get, like, what, 20 processes delivered here? So we're going to get um, about 160. So we're probably going to get bursts of, like, 320, 330 uh, science. That's the cutest little delivery ship. Um, thank you. Alright, is our... We got... 10 reactors. What do we need here? Well, 16. Unless I dismantle the old ones. That would be a... A little bit of a waste at the moment, I think. Um, how are we doing for making those reactors? We've got nine here already. We're just waiting for it to be delivered. Okay. In that case... Yeah, here we go. This one is waiting to pick up the reactors. Could maybe get this one to move on a bit sooner. It's waiting for 2,000 blanks. Oh no. I recommend the stats GUI mod to see the estimated research time. Helps with late game research because they take ages. That said, it's probably better to start a cargo rocket from a space base. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, it depends, I guess. I mean, when you've got a space elevator, that's no contest whatsoever. We're going to be able to cut down on so much stuff because of the space elevator with the next playthrough. It's really kind of... Um, the space elevator helps so much, but they're making it worse in so many ways with stack sizes and things like that. But I think it's going to be net positive, not having to have a cargo rocket or a spaceship for every single resource that we're sending up. I mean, technically we didn't have to do that, but to do it differently is much, much more complicated and runs into throughput issues. We'll see when I get there, hoping to go space elevator with iron, uh, to iron ship for the most part, yeah. Yeah, not having to have the spaceships land on the planet saves just an insane amount of fuel. Alright, uh, so how long... I might actually get this little train to just get out of the way for now. We need that uh, antimatter reactor. Uh, I really, I mean, I was quite happy with this, uh, LTN to short cargo train loader thing. 
I mean, I am happy with it, except we've scaled way beyond the point where this is a hell of a bottleneck right here. The only trouble is um, having multiple stations that do this in the one block, it's possible that both of them would be requesting the same resource and then we don't have enough. Stack sizes aren't that much of a problem, just promotes direct insertion and belting stuff, I suppose. But you have to move stuff from planet to planet as well. Designing my first actual train ship, there's a hack. You can build a train into the side of a ship using spaceship doors. It's not really a hack though, is it? Unless you're getting like free uh, container stress. It's not even that much... Like, the train takes up way more space than chests. Um, four chests is... I mean, let's compare this. One of these uh, long trains right here. These chests, these four steel chests have more storage space than these four cargo wagons. You can drive a train onto a ship. Yes, yes you can. Doxilos. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, alright, so are we just about ready to launch this ship back? Oh, where's our train? Oh good, it's waiting on five, 900 space platform. The hack is 180 sized spaceship? 180 sized? Uh, do you mean like hull stress, or...? Just unfortunate that landing a ship with rails has a huge UPS hit. Oh, does it repath just like when we change our signals? The hull is 180. Okay. Oh, oh, that would be really bad. Um, can you imagine? Like, okay, let me let me demonstrate. I'm going to mark a single. Uh, we need something where there's motion happening. So we can really see it. Okay, here's some bots. I'm going to mark a single rail signal for deconstruction, and that's going to cause the trains to repath. Uh, for every rail signal that I place or remove, it's going to be twice, thrice, etc., as long as this. Uh, so I'm going to do this right now. All right, so you saw that pause. Undo. Redo. Undo. Uh, imagine something like that every time a spaceship landed. 20 UPS, yeah. I mean, we're all the way up to 21, it's fine. But suffice to say, um, in my next playthrough, I'll definitely be taking advantage of some mods that make... What is this? Oh, right. Uh, definitely take advantage of some mods that make unloading from trains take far fewer entities. Um, and also less circuit uh, logic. We're currently at 7.2 for circuit networks on the game update. It's almost a quarter of our game update time, actually. Storage contains is the UPS rip. Containers? I don't know about containers themselves. I don't think they they really do anything when they're sitting idle, but uh, like 24 chests or 48 chests and four times, uh, sorry, twice as many inserters and then some belts at each station. It adds up.
Oh wait, I was muted. Larger containers are huge UPS sinks, um, but doesn't having the equivalent number of storage containers with fewer entities, uh, isn't that going to be a net positive? I mean, here we've got 24, this is really basic, but here we've got 24 inserters, 24 chests. Isn't it going to be looking at, if, if it works the way you say it is, it's looking at 48 times 24, uh, inventory slots every time they swing, right? Starts checking from the end of the chest, so not nearly that big of a sink. Okay. Yeah, that wouldn't... It, it would surprise me if it was that inefficient. Uh, I think Factorio is actually incredibly well optimized. I would be surprised if there wasn't room for improvement in one place or another, but... The sheer amount of stuff that's going on in Factorio before you start to get UPS drops, even on a mediocre machine, is really impressive. Nothing compared to everything else in your base, yeah. Most likely. Um, but what I want to cut down on, speaking of... Uh, train input output is the sheer number of entities here. Uh, not to mention, I mean, I did uh, end up using a combinatorless uh, balanced unloader system. I don't know how much better that is than having like each over 24 output each, that sort of thing. Um, we can't really do that for the loading systems. Uh, we can do combinatorless balanced if we literally just limit it to exactly one train, for example. Um, that's fine for slow resources. But if we have, like, decent throughput... Uh, here we've got an averaging system. And I'm sure those add up. We've also got a bunch of combinators for precise input of different resources here. Whereas with certain mods you could just have four entities, one for each cargo wagon. New Pixel Perfect, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so I think we're still waiting on heat pipe though. Uh, we've got 22 coming. That's oddly specific. from this one train. Another 13 here, that's the long heat pipe. What a mess. Maybe I should have... Is it too late? No, we could put it here, I guess. Maybe I should have a long train bringing scaffolding to this place. So that the short trains don't have to bother with it. Um, I think I actually have everything I need in this block already. So, the trouble is we've already got all this scaffolding here. 109,000? Wait, what? Oh, there's also some here. Um, so we've actually got, like, I could use buffer chests. I'd have to change them afterwards, but we could take the we could take the scaffolding from here and put it over here. Scaffolding Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me remove the request for scaffolding here first. Wait, no, don't do that. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, scaffolding. We don't want to throw it in the trash, actually. Well. 
Yeah, there's gonna be a bunch of it that arrives now. Alright, deconstruct that temporarily. And... Undo? Okay. So now we can... We don't have a request for scaffolding here. We've still got it whitelisted in this block. Scaffolding... 4800. And... We can put 24 chests of scaffolding here. Actually, I think we can do this. No, never mind. Scaffolding... And then this is only allowing long trains, perfect. Just connect that to there. And stack threshold. 160. Scaffolding. How much can fit here? Like 100,000. Which I think is what we were requesting before. Okay. How many bots do you have in total? Uh, well, we've got like 1,500 construction bots here. How would I even find out? Let, let's look at how many logistic bots we've made all time. 727,000. You can see it in the production tab. Uh, like how many bots are active right now, or how many kills though? Oh boy. Let's see. Uh, we've lost 481,000 logistic bots, um, almost all of them to bot attrition. That's a bit harsh. We're up to 30 million small asteroids. You have about 350,000 now, yeah. Yeah, I might even turn bot attrition off next time. I just find it a little bit obnoxious. And it's not like it's a challenge to overcome it. You just have to resupply bots, which is not something that's like difficult for me. Um, alright, so scaffolding is getting moved. It's probably going to send us even more bots now. Stop asking for scaffolding. Oh, it's going to... Okay, it's still going to insert the right amount of scaffolding. That's fine. I'll just leave that as is. Isn't bot attrition mandatory? I think there's just a setting under LTN, uh, not LTN, uh, space exploration. I could be wrong. Oh, yeah, no, here it is, robot attrition factor. You can actually turn it off mid-game. Hmm. Other mods can modify or override this value for specific surfaces. That's probably space exploration. So maybe only in the start settings it might be possible to turn it off. I can't believe you murdered... <laughs> I didn't murder them, they just malfunctioned. I would never. Alright, just how long is it going to take till we get our heat pipe, though? We still don't have any more. We've got our 16 reactors, though. Um... Still looking for another 300 scaffolding for this one. If I remove this, 
I wonder if it's not. Uh, I wonder if the LTN is going to read the schedule when it gets there, or if it's already locked in somewhere else. Also, while we're at it, can we please request more than 22 Naquim heat pipe? They died of old age, happy and fulfilled. <laughs> I'm sure half died to sudden unexpected nuclear explosion. They died doing what they love. That, that's the important thing. Moving circuits around. That is a lot of corpses, though. Fuck bot attrition? Yeah, I tend to agree. Silent Storm, good to see you again. Well, welcome, hope you're doing well. I love the complexity and all the stuff that space exploration adds. Uh, I don't love as much the anti-quality of life features. I just automatically replace them? Yeah, so do I. You work them to death, literally? Ouch. If you could maybe do maintenance on them or something. I guess that would probably just be construction bots with repair packs, though, which is, like, already built into it. In point six, you can't even invent swarm safety before leaving Nalvis. Jeez. Well, you can get Vulcanite from Nalvis, though. You can't get functional Logibots before leaving, either. I remember all of our bots were ridiculously slow before we had a significant amount of space research as well. Like, uncomfortably slow. Bot attrition used to be more interesting... The base value was originally a hundred times the current one. What? Not Vulcanite on Nalvis. Uh, if you do coal mining, you get Vulcanite. Unless they changed it. Bot speed is locked behind energy four. What, the first bot speed? Why are they like this? Like, what does that add to the game, honestly? I'd love to know. I don't know where it is in point six. The later ones. Well, yeah, of course. I thought you meant the first one. Jeez. Uh, do we still not have our heat pipe? We still don't have our heat pipe. This one's still picking up scaffolding. Uh, I could... Yeah, I think... Scaffolding... Negative a million. We've got a request threshold set so high that this won't kick in, but effectively this will make it think that there's no scaffolding available from this uh, short station. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of pickups scheduled that do include scaffolding already. Uh, and I missed one of them. The blank data cards can wait. Uh, Dr. Lusa, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, could I just... Uh, I want it to take all of this stuff, but I can't get it to skip the space platform scaffold without just telling it to leave. Also, let's look for more. Actually, I don't think that's going to work. If I suddenly tell it to look for more Naquim heat pipe. 
I don't think the insert is going to put it in. No logy chests is why I built an entire planet by hand. Yeah, I can see why. That's rough. Okay. Um, what can we be doing while we're waiting for that? We have this many ships in motion, moving nothing but Nacrotite. 16 of them, to be precise. Uh, I don't know to what extent we're still bottlenecking on refueling them. It looks like not at all. Fantastic. Um, so we should be able to get consistently four belts of Nacrotite, I think. I see all of the furnaces are on. Um, how long have we been consistent with that? Not too long. It's getting there. The dips are getting smaller. Point six, there's no Vulcanite on Nalvis, even with coal mining. That's a bit rough. Need to leave Nalvis to get it. I guess that makes coal mining a bit simpler to deal with. Uh, I suppose you get... I mean, it doesn't... Oh no, that is that is a significant difference. If we only get five physical items, um, then I wouldn't need this extra station up here just because the inserters only have five uh, filter slots. Although, if I'm going to use mods with, like, uh, special entities for loading trains, I don't know if I'll even need that. You got a new liquid from coal mining for smelting mega amount of resource. They turned the one into a liquid. So what, you get water, oil, and a third liquid? Or is it like something instead of water or something like that? Hyroflux. Five basic ores and three liquids. But if it's three liquids, that means we can't have nice rows, doesn't it? We're going to have to have these at least two tiles, or what, three tiles apart? Oh no. Oh no. Well, we'll see how it goes. I should have done this ages ago with the scaffolding. Here's our stuff. Ice, reactor, high temp, and it's actually the long heat pipe only. Which I'm a little bit less concerned about. We're still waiting for this one to have its turn. Even this needs space science first. To use pyroflux for the new recipes. Until then it's only useful as fuel. Well, that's still useful. What is this train looking for? Not... Heat pipe. Won't take too long though. You know, by now I probably could have gone back to Nalvis Orbit myself to pick up the heat pipe. What is this looking for? Scaffolding. That makes sense. Uh, 16,000? I think is what fits in a train. Yes, good.
Use my pyro and water in steam turbines. You can use it in steam turbines? Oh, for fuel. Okay. That makes sense. It... I, I'm curious, is there a way to get um, a thousand degree or 900 degree steam without like mixing different temperatures and trying to balance it, which you, while not being able to measure the temperature? Uh, I would definitely like to have condenser turbines run at 900 degrees. Prior plus water equals 165. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd really like to get my hands on condenser turbines running at 900 for spaceships would be very nice. Especially when you're stuck with ion ships. Um, okay. I guess we could start building the Victory spaceship, even though we won't be able to run it for a while. Um, I seriously have my doubts that I'm going to be able to crack 3500. I guess we could toy with getting rid of some of these floor sections as well. Does this, um, does this fit here? Just barely. Alright, let's remove the old design. I just realized that's going to add a lot of... It's it's going to add a lot of construction bot jobs, not logistic jobs, to this block. So that's fine for now. Some SR latch fuckery could probably get you to 900 degree steam. Um, so I think what you have to do is pump in... Like, for example, 500 degree steam and 5,000. Or like 5,000 and, I don't know, 165 degree steam. But there's no way to detect what temperature the steam is actually at. If you produced a specific amount, a, a very specific amount which you can't do because pumps tend to over oversupply fluids. But if you could produce a very specific amount of each type of fluid and then mix them, um, then you could end up with 900 degree steam. It doesn't have to be exactly 900, um, but... It stops working if it goes beyond a thousand degrees, weirdly enough. Uh, so that's a bit unfortunate. I did have uh, one design where I was trying to make a steam-powered spaceship, uh, which, is, by the way, is quite easy if you have high-temperature turbine generators. Um, but I was trying to make a steam-powered spaceship which would basically recycle, it would use a condenser turbine, start with 5,000 degrees steam, um, and it would use a uh, electric boiler to turn the output water into 165 degrees steam, uh, which would get pumped back into the steam supply, and instead of losing water, your steam would gradually get colder until you ran out of energy. Um, great idea, except for the fact that anything over a thousand degree steam just won't work for the condenser, uh, condenser turbine. Unfortunate. All right, we've got a whopping three Naquim heat pipe on the way. That is suboptimal to say the least. Uh, I guess we can leave the spaceship floor here. Do we need any heat pipe for this ship? Yes. I 
don't want to use that just yet. I could maybe remove it for the moment. Also these. Also I think that had an extra bit of heat pipe that was maybe wasted. A ratio of 6 165s to 1.5k steam uh, to 15k steam is 970. If you can mix it like that. Yeah, that's if you can rely on it um, like all of that working perfectly consistently. I think the fluid dynamics alone would probably mess it up a bit, even if you kept the input and output saturated. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. And the trouble is, with no way to read the temperature, there's no way to automatically correct it. Fill tanks to max, then pump into second tanks, repeat. Yeah, uh, but once again, the, Im the the lack of precision of the pumps, um, I think it would eventually add up to the system crashing. That's a lot of bot haloing, but I'm not overly concerned about it right now. They're separate from the logistic bots. Ice and... This train is still waiting its turn for the Naquim heat pipes? Oh my goodness. The train... Uh, the train order going through intersections is so arbitrary. This thing's been here for, what, the last half an hour? At least? I need to get rid of every other contender for this station. And ironically, everything that this train is doing I probably could have done with some requester chests. Whoops. Are you kidding me? No. No, how dare you. Get out of here. Sneaky. Alright, finally we're looking for the heat pipes. And I want to see if this actually makes it request 97. Because I changed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, LTN... LTN looks at the schedule at the moment that the train arrives at the station. Good to know. You could skirt around precision by needing full tanks. Yeah, it would be somewhat precise, but I think it would eventually... I think that little arrow would build up over time. Uh, now we don't have heat pipe. Okay. We have what we need for heat pipe. We're actually making way too many different things here at the moment. Um, I could force it to make heat pipe in particular. In fact, I might keep this constant combinator here. Heat pipe. And... Go. Nothing but heat pipe, please. Hmm, 
That is a bit of a bottleneck. Uh, I could multiply results by input count. I've said this before, but I really wish these combinators would have built into them multiply results by input count, but up to some limit of like five stacks or something. All right, so that's not going to take too long now. Fantastic. All right, let's switch this off and connect this here. Get rid of that. This is just for temporary things. Meanwhile, our victory ship uh, is still waiting on some floors, actually. Oh, wait. I think the Nexus is going to get trashed. Uh, let's see. Nexus. It's going to get taken back to the mall, if I'm not careful. It already did. Uh... And it just means I'm going to have to go back here manually to place the Nexus. I'm sure we can find that, uh, find time for that before the end of the game. Fill the tanks to the brim. The trouble with that is just how long it takes. Uh, like, you can really see it with the fluid tankers that we've got, the spaceships. Um, there's a trade-off between how much, uh, how much we fill this up and how much time we spend filling it up. Because the more full it gets, the longer it takes to pump in even a tiny amount of fluid. Um, so right here, for example, well, this one's actually unloading. Uh, let's see. Do I have a handy... Oh, here we go. Yeah, so emptying it right now, um, we're saying petroleum gas in this container has to be less than 10. Um, it would help if... No, wait, this is full. Wait, what? Oh, no. That pump is facing the wrong way. Well, I'm glad we checked this. Uh, so... The more empty this gets, the longer it takes to empty just that little bit more, just that little bit more, just that little bit more. So if we're to fill even one container up to the absolute limit where the pump speed drops to zero, um, it's actually going to take a little while. I suspect that Veldak might be around. Something, something, words on stream. Andy Gaming, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, alright. We're still waiting on that little bit of floor there. Do we have the... Yes. Yes, we do. We finally have the heat pipe. 41 long time. Dude, your game is insane. Thank you. Kellogg's, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Long pipe. Is that the 32? So I think we've already got enough to make another one of these. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. Bo and Nestra.
All right, it's going to take a few minutes to get here, but that'll be enough to build this out properly. Uh, I guess we can start the bots supplying the stuff. Here comes our antimatter stream. Have we been consistently making it lately? No. That's actually a little bit surprising. Oh, I only had four containers here. Huh. That means this has to drain completely before... before a train is going to be summoned. I didn't really foresee having to make this stuff at speed. Hmm... I could just add a bit more storage. Yeah, I think I should just add some more. And we can connect that up as well. Oh, I still haven't removed this. Let's do it now. That's a lot of cryonite we're going to have to pick up. And this train can go home. Oh no, don't, 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 don't. Oh no. Don't. Okay, that's fine. I can just mark the train not to be killed. Phew. Alright. By the way, not sure where exactly the O comes from, but Fenestra is Latin for window. Oh. Is this a window into another dimension? Alright. Let's move on to this one. That didn't take long, actually. comes from the I need an additional letter to make it cool place. <laughs> Indeed. Very valid location. Let's remove those, but not that. And this and this. Uh-oh. Okay. And this. Finally getting around to clearing this thing up. I might get them to visit the mall real quick. They're probably getting a bit full. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, where's our construction ship? It is on its way. We don't really know how long it's going to take, except from experience. Um, wait, no, this does give us an ETA. Is it the ETA from Foenestra that gives us a weird travel time? Exiting star gravity. Well, maybe it gives us an accurate ETA while we're still in system. So it's going to be about four minutes in-game. You're still in system, yeah. You go through the window and it starts you off again in another galaxy or something like that. It was... It was too, that was weird. Yes. Maybe Foenestra is one of the other endings of the game. 
I can hardly see having to go to this much effort and needing this much late game stuff just for being able to have a shortcut or something. Then again, this is the space exploration devs. I'm sure in patch point seven, this is how much you'll have to do to get robot worker speed one. All right. Um, please let it not be another disaster of the original No Man's Sky ending. Oh no. Next time on Space Exploration Part 400, so I just recovered from the New Game Plus ending. Oh no. Uh, what can we do while our ship is on its way? Still waiting on the spiders to be emptied. There's probably a block or several hundred that I could redesign on Nalvis. Oh, this thing still needs deconstruction. Uh, that we could reduce the machine count and so on. We've also got this block that needs to be removed. And I think this one as well. No, we're still using this. Crude oil. This is the one I keep thinking that I've done over here, and I actually haven't. Uh, I guess we'll have the spiders do this one first, since it's nice and close. Let's remove all of this. And these. It's kind of nice not to have to worry about the scaffolding. Maybe I should have used a deconstruction planner here. I'm sure I would have forgotten some detail. You open that gate and a billion replicators, the end. Oh no. Each plus every input goes up by a factor of 10. Every output stays the same. Good luck. No, thank you. Uh, where's our ship? Yeah, so now its ETA is all over the place. we got going on. Let's check our throughput for appetite. It looks like our ingots are actually being consistent now. Fantastic. And what about plate? Plate is going to be pretty much just a reflection of ingots. Because it's very, very easy to get enough ingots everywhere, as opposed to plate, and everything plate turns into. So for the last half hour, we've actually been consistent. Uh, it looks like 3.1k per minute. That's actually really good. I think a train load is 3.2k. There you go. So we're actually doing just under a train a minute of Naquium plate now. That'll get us spaceship victory in about 600 years. I think the ETA actually shows correctly here from time to time. Or maybe that was a fluke earlier. 1 minute 57 sounds about right. 
600 years is down from the heat death estimate. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, I think we also... Where are my spiders? That's right, I was getting them to unload cryonite. How are you over full? I split them into two separate types and we still have this problem. Uh, did I not tell it to trash unrequested? Well, there's your problem. Wait, what? This one? What? Oh, I forgot. Certain items just don't get counted. The trash unrequested. Yeah, that doesn't help. Where did you even get media defense installations from? That's weird. How long has it been carrying that around? Alright. So we need to remove this and then uh, improve our antimatter canister put I mean we might not need more antimatter canister throughput yet but I would rather stay ahead of it that everything? Not quite. Probably even without adding containers here. We're already asking for 120k. So there should be an... Oh, I, I lowered the priority on this. No, it's normal priority. Hmm. Train limit is 3. Train length is 3. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, how about long trains only? And we're looking for 8,000 canisters. I could have made the request threshold smaller. For the fluid. What's our rate of production? Uh, regular canisters, max rate. It's only 6.25. Okay. How does your rail system work? Is that two way traffic in some parts? Yes, the roundabouts are two way. So I'm able to, with double, with bi-directional trains, I'm able to just take off from the roundabout pretty much anywhere I want. Um, and we can easily have, we can easily have very compact stations. Very, very compact compared to having to do a loop uh, for a train that has locomotives only on one side. Uh, what's our max rate here? 0 0.5 per second. That is not very fast. We can't put... Oh, we can put modules in this. I was confusing it with um, 
the material fabricator. Alright, so let's... It looks like our spiders have nothing else to do here. Uh, I guess we'll pick that up. No, I wouldn't even worry about it. Let's swing by the mall and head back this way. Also, I just realized... Narcospheres. We probably don't need any more, slash we definitely don't need to... Pour... I guess this is the minimum without diminishing returns. Where is our Arcosphere Collector? Uh, it currently has a whopping two Arcospheres. Oh, it hasn't gone through all of these yet. So we're getting like, what, probably three, maybe four Arcospheres per trip. Let's see, this is uh, kind of hard to tell. I'm pretty sure that's literally like one, two, three, four, five arcospheres. That's over 10 hours. 0 0.1 per minute actually not that bad. But I don't know if I want to keep pouring resources into Arcospheres. Although it's not like it's costing us Naquium. Right? The Arcosphere Collector. Maybe it is. Let me check. Uh, it is in fact costing us Naquium. Hmm. I might stop making more Arcospheres. Oh, it's also costing antimatter canisters as well. 10 cubes for one collector, and usually that gives us nothing. Yeah, that's kind of expensive. We've definitely hit a critical mass where our Arcospheres are totally fine. All of these machines have uh, inputs pretty much saturated most of the time. It's only the output that we control for the Arcosphere folding. So the fact that we've got a minimum of six of each of these in the big container, and that's not counting the ones that are in here, which is like five each, and that's not counting the ones that are in use over here, uh, I think we're totally fine for Arcospheres now. I'll just let it run its course as is, but we won't be taking any more deliveries um, to this station. Oh wait, if I switch it off it doesn't act as a provider. Um, I'll copy-paste this here and I'll get rid of the requests. I could have just removed the request th stack threshold, I guess. So this will provide Arcospheres, but it won't make any more. Alright, where's our ship? It is... oh, it's back. And it's auto-connected to the other construction ship. There we go. Uh, let's go grab that stuff. And not put it in our trash. We've already got our fuel. We do not have ice. Uh, are you telling me we actually have zero ice? Yes, yes you are. I could borrow some water from over here, but oh, this one actually ran out. Um... Oh, we've been wasting fuel here because there's no water. 
because I didn't change that condition. That's that's a problem. Hurry up, bots. No, I can't wait for you. We need this ice to be redistributed. Nice, indeed. Still getting Arcospheres from the same place, yes. Uh, I could set it up to get Arcospheres from somewhere else, but I think we've just got enough. I don't really see the need to bother. Where are the logistic bots? Oh, the ice isn't in my... There we go. This power is looking good. Yeah, I think we'll... I, th I think we'll need four of these. Um... But first we want to test it. I had 200 to 300 gigawatts here. Jeez. But older version of SE. Oh, I see. Alright, so we have water. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We do not have water. Um, could we perhaps just connect the construction ships to this network? No? What? Okay, there we go. And then, fantastic. Cool, great, wonderful. Still got a few things to build here. We could probably start warming up the reactors, though. Maybe wait for the bots to calm down a little bit first. Uh, I should at least wait until the pipes have all been placed. Oh, there's so many construction bots waiting to recharge here. It's so much worse than I thought it would be. Let's add some superchargers. And I'm gonna yoink. And yoink. I mean, regular robobots will be fine once things are settled here, but... We sort of cranked up the, uh, the requests. Maybe I should have a buffer chest or ten and much smaller requests over here. Yeah, that actually seems like a good idea. Two hundred... On the requester chests. Bit late to do this now, I suppose. But it'll help with uh, the incoming... Oh, right. It couldn't be a buffer chest because... You can't take from a buffer chest to put into a buffer chest. Except we do have this contraption here to get around that. So once the ship gets here, um, we basically take whatever the contents of the containers for the ship is. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I forgot. Yeah, I forgot to add a chest for this. One more ice chest. What is this? 
the console. Also, this needs to go. Uh, yeah, so we're looking for two chests of ice and or uh, 2,000 antimatter canisters and then this thing will do a del uh, delivery. That's why we don't have any ice. Or, I mean, we've got tons of ice, but it just wasn't distributed very well. Uh, and we'll say... A couple of chests of ice here. And one chest... Oh, we've already got buffer chests for the antimatter. That's fine. Okay, why has this not been built? Because we don't have enough condenser turbines. That's why. Uh, that's bad. Are we really requesting only a handful of condenser turbines here? 17. I guess that used to be a lot. That means I need to bring even more stuff over here. Number two and number one probably still have some turbines and stuff. Let's just send them there directly. And as for these two, whoops, uh, I guess we'll send them back to Nalvis Orbit. But not before I put an anchor here so that the other construction ships will land automatically. A clamp, that is. this orbit. And what else are we needing? Some more pipes still. I didn't realize just how much this thing needed. Uh, let's replace that. With these. And. I think this build is finished. Except for the actual building it part. I think we're ready to blueprint it, in other words. Uh, so this is. What, 24 gigawatts? Um, untested. Don't really feel like there's anything to add there. Repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That is a monster of a reactor, though. Alright, so we have... a bit more storage space for our antimatter stream now. We've got a long train bringing antimatter stream. A long train bringing magnetic canisters. Why is it only bringing 6,000? 
should be 8,000 or, or bust. That's really weird. Provide stack threshold 160. Short trains are permissible. Provide threshold 1k doesn't do anything. Uh, I don't understand. Provide stack threshold 160 should... Oh, wait. So it's probably the requester that's asking for less. Also, this is imbalanced and that's going to be a disaster. Uh, without... I wish I could use uh, even distribution remotely. That'd be a bit overpowered, I guess. Hmm. I, it's not like I can put bots down. All right, we're just gonna empty this. It'll have to get taken back to the mall. It'll get redistributed. And I might even, no, it's fine if short trains pick up from here, that's okay. And I was going to say we could make a few more of these, but we're bottlenecked on antimatter stream, even though we've got lots of it. So it's really just the delivery system, I think. Hmm. Uh, let's run a couple of little experiments here. See if we can't cheese just enough hull stress. Also, that would need some kind of refueling. Or fueling in the first place. Cavities, indeed. <laughs> Uh, I guess we don't necessarily need that bit. We don't have to go all out just yet. We'll, we'll get a feel for whether we could approach 3500 stress. Woo tooth decay, wait what? <laughs> yeah. Look, think of it as a lower density starship. It's it's fine. That's what we'll tell ourselves. And maybe this as well. That bit's looking a bit strange. Space cheese? Yeah. So anyway, this increases hull integrity. Uh, did we get all the walls? Oh, we don't have our 2000 container stress here, but it's not going to make that big of a difference on hull stress. It's actually shockingly close to 3500. Okay. Um, since you insist, uh, I can't get any more out of that. I could get rid of one of the solar panels and put the console up here.
on the sides it looks like not that many lasers. Yeah, there's not that many lasers. We don't really need them. Like, all the lasers accomplish at that speed is shooting down tiny asteroids. Um, so they save a bit of energy on the shields. It doesn't really even matter. Come on, bots. I forgot to order that one. It's going to take a minute. Alright, so that is... Canisters. Five canisters per second. That is probably still a decent amount. If we can have this thing running continuously, that's probably actually a decent amount. Alright. Drum roll. Uh, 3,480. This might actually be below... 3500 if we just, uh, once we add the Nexus and some accumulators. And if not, we can probably arrange it. Yeah, I think, I think we can probably pull this off. Um, we're not automatically making any Nexuses. I don't see any harm in... Bringing it over here. Uh, that needs to be a negative. This ship is still waiting for ice. Uh, and we need a Naquium solar panel. I mean, not really. I could just remove this one for now. Is the bot going to take it straight there, or is it going to go back to the mall with it? It's probably going to go to the RoboPod and then straight back here. Or rather, the container. Pick up four. I don't think that's happening. No, don't take it here. Why would you prioritize the requester chest over an actual building? How dare you. What about this time? Nope, it's immediately getting taken back here. Uh, solar panel... I could just request some. We could do that. It's fine. Wait, the stack threshold is one. I would have to request 20. Um, I've only got three here. No, I'm just going to whitelist it. And then, wait, did it get built? It did, finally. Alright, so we just need some accumulators. Uh, I don't think I can actually arrange that as easily. We've got 17 here. Fine, we'll make a whole stack. Just so that I don't have to come back here to arrange it myself. So, solar panel, 20, uh, where could I cram in the accumulators? 
Let's put the solar and accumulators together, I guess. I do wish you could set different thresholds for different resources. Instead of just having a number and or stack threshold. Um, so that'll eventually get built. And we'll be able to confirm if it's under 3500. Where are our construction ships? Both on their way. ETA is question mark. Uh, but the actual ETA should just be a few minutes. You can still narrow the left and right edges of the wings. Left and right edges. Yeah, we could probably cut off all of this, actually. That's a good point. It should still be streamlined. I don't know if I'm going to like the look of it after that. Uh, especially if I get rid of that bit of wall. That's not happening. It looks very... Um, flimsy, this part. <laughs> Hashtag ugly? Oh no. Maybe we'll put it back if it stays under 3500. Form from function? Why not both? What are we at? 3440. Yeah, I think we're very easily going to be able to squeeze this down to 3500 without really changing the ship. Make them actual wings? Uh, like, remove this bit? It's gonna look a bit strange. I mean, it already looks a bit strange, I guess. Is this the wind beneath our wings? All you had to do was turn it into Swiss cheese? Yum. Indeed. Yeah, I'm thinking empty space in the spaceship should be a bit more discounted. Bring the engines down to the level of the other rows and then you'll have wings. I suppose so. When do we get our nexus? Here it is. No, that's not a nexus. It is a round purple thing, but not the round purple thing we're looking for. Here we go. This this brain right here um, is waiting to pick up the nexus. Oh. So how much research do we need? Uh, if, if it's only 3,500, we have to finish this. That's like 2k, which is about 1k realistically. Uh, we need factory spaceship 4 and factory spaceship 5, I believe. Plus 500, plus 500. Our current maximum is... Yeah, 1,000 below. So we need to put 12,000... 
about 14,000 uh, Deep Space Science packs after productivity bonuses, which is about 7,000. And considering this hasn't moved at all for quite a while, that might take a minute. Hello there, Jelly the Bean. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What are these bots doing? Oh, is it a different spider? I can't tell which spider they're having trouble with. Why is this always empty of... Hold on. 50, 100... Hold on. This is 100k. And I set it up to request when we get down to 20k. I think we should just add more storage here. What's this? 200,000. Are these balanced? Yes, they should be. Fantastic. Yeah, there's not much point in building another one of these if we can't keep up with it already. Uh, Seepercat, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How was your stream today? I see that spaceship victory coming. Just missed a few streams. No worries. Devdot, good to see you again. Valdak, good to see you again also. A very salty stream. Can relate. I am, after all, trying to power Thoanestra. Uh, but yeah, we are building the Victory Spaceship. Uh, just trimming away some... supposedly superfluous spaceship floor. I think it should definitely... I, I think the spaceship system should definitely discount the floors more. Uh, the empty floors. So that you don't have to turn your ship into Swiss cheese. Um, but... I haven't actually put down the Nexus or these Naquium Accumulators yet, um, but I'm pretty sure we can actually keep this thing under uh, 3,500, even though it was 3,770 uh, with this design earlier. Speed holes, yes, those are speed holes. They make the ship go faster, quite literally. Powered out, one could say, indeed. Alright, uh, when are our ships getting here? I wish I knew. Hold on. Anchor to Foenestra? Oh, that's why. Because I didn't activate that again. Instruction ship number one. After I went to the trouble of giving it an auto anchor spot as well. You should add some flame decals and RGB. Seems good. It's not symmetrical though, is it? Not perfectly. Uh, it was pretty close to symmetrical. Um, I had the Nexus up here, but that was kind of a waste of space considering we had... Uh, we need exactly seven um, high temp turbine generators uh, to support this thing. Embrace the asymmetry. No. Uh, what else are we doing here? Where's our science? We're waiting on... Naquim processors still. Which is not surprising, considering we strictly prioritized the... Um... I could just split it. We're going to make these buffer chests. And we'll get somewhat of an even split between 
putting tesseracts into the train system and turning them into processors. But it would be better to just saturate it. Maholic is very creative with his ship designs. Asymmetry is nice. Look at the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Oh, we got it. Oh, we got all of it. All right, drum roll. Is it below 3,500? It's taking a long time to figure out. 3459, it's actually not even close. Fantastic. So considering this thing can break 250 at 3770 uh, hull stress, uh, this thing will definitely beat... This, this thing will definitely beat the game. This thing will blast, indeed. I guess you could do worse aesthetically than these empty bits. Don't let Coyote see it then? Uh oh. Alright. Do we have our reactor? We have our reactor. Uh, so we have this one, which is like 11 gigawatts. This one is slightly more, I think. And then we switched this on and found that it wanted an extra 10 gigawatts whenever we turned on one of the movable components. Uh, so I think we actually need like 90 gigawatts to run this whole thing. Uh, this should be 24. I haven't actually tested it yet, but I'm pretty confident in this design because uh, the water, the 500 steam goes here, the water goes here, the water goes straight back into the system. It doesn't all converge on a bottleneck somewhere. Um, and I don't think we're going to have trouble getting the heat all the way over here either. So... Shouldn't have too much difficulty with this reactor, I would hope. But if this works... Wait, what? Why is exactly one of these missing fuel? Robots... Dardano? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, yeah. That's unfortunate. Request not set? Oh. Well, there's your problem. I'm actually really surprised by that, especially considering how I copy-pasted things across. I mean, if these have fuel in them. They've obviously got their requests. You can see by the red and green lights on the inserters that those are probably set correctly. You'll have to update your blueprint. Oh, that's true. Select new contents and Dunsky. I doubt we need two of these uh, biochemical facilities. Looking good. Only 1600 degrees at the end so far. I don't think that's going to be a problem. So if all goes according to plan, we should just need four of these, and we can get rid of this stuff uh, to run this monstrosity. Thirty-four hundred degrees. 
Um, we actually calculated we would need about 56. What is this? 16, 32... Uh, if we were to do one reactor, it would probably come out to here in order to power this thing. That is kind of crazy. How's our little adjustment to get research to happen going? Fantastic. That's what I want to see. Um, I should probably change this back to provide threshold 40 stacks. Otherwise it's going to be imbalanced when we put it somewhere else. I hear fluids. We're not getting steam out here just yet. I wouldn't expect to. Uh, 4400 degrees on the end. And we haven't reached 10k here yet. Is the research actually going? Uh, yes and no. Um, everything is working, but because of the uh, system that we've got, it's very bursty with rail deliveries. So we're waiting on 40 Equium processors. Oh, sorry, 160. Uh, and then that'll get delivered. Uh, and then all of a sudden we're going to get probably... Yeah, we've got the Tesseracts here, so we're probably going to get about... Uh, 1,280 uh, Deep Space Science Packs, uh, Pack 4 in one go. Productivity bonus 109%. Uh, so we're getting like 2.6k research uh, once we actually bother to deliver the Naquium processes here. Um, and we'll get, I think it's a thousand Deep Space Science Pack 4, we'll trigger a delivery here. No, it's like 600. So yeah, it's a little bursty for now. Looks like we've got steam at the end. Oh, we're totally saturated. Yeah, well, we're very nearly totally saturated already. Uh, that shouldn't be too surprising, considering... Uh, considering we're not using the power yet. No input fluid. We need to make more. We need to keep this mostly empty, but... We do still need more ice, it seems. More water. I wonder if that ring actually needs to be over there, or if it could be moved. Like putting it next to a star and powering with solar panels? We need a space tug? Yes. Yes, we do. That's an excellent idea. Okay. Uh, I think I need to wait for the fluid. before this thing's going to run properly. The minute we see some water in these pipes, we can assume that it's uh, sufficiently saturated, I think. Lore-wise, I'd say that if it is in a space-time anomaly, it still needs dimensional anchors to stabilize. It wouldn't work in normal space. 
I still have only made one dimensional anchor. Um, I don't know if I can put dimensional anchors in all in the same star or if I have to spread them out. Team is building up. We're still low on input fluid. The thing is, you got to be careful. Um, you have to have it a, quite a lot of empty space for the recycled water to come back in easily. And it does recycle 99% of it. So we can almost think of this... Uh, 5,000 degree steam as having a whole lot of water in the system as well. Working. Yeah, it's going to take a little while to saturate. I should actually use stack inserters. It's I mean, in the long run, we don't need stack inserters to put in the ice, but right now we do. Alright, that's a bit better. I think these go to 1k before they let water through the other side. Yeah. It's gonna take a little while to saturate this. I would love to take our little victory ship on a test drive, but uh, we can't until we finish the research. Looks like our ships are resupplied here. I guess I should get at least one of them to continue building out the solar power. I don't know. Um, can I just scrounge up 60 gigawatts here? How much is this? 28... I would have to disconnect these. Or maybe we could run off, like, accumulators for two-tenths of a second. I just want to see if two-dimensional... If multiple-dimensional anchors around the same star are valid or not. What's the playtime on the save? Yes. Far too long. Uh, over a month game time, in fact. Some of the names in this mod are a love. Uh, like what? You know, the sooner I decommission these, the less uh, the less we waste on this less efficient model. Uh, but before I do, I want to make absolutely sure this one works properly. Is the game time global or tied to UPS? It's tied to UPS. I'm actually a little bit shocked at just how long... Oh, we've run out of ice here? No, we haven't. 
Why is the Inserta like this? There's definitely... Oh, because we reached the... We actually reached our limit for water that we're t aiming for, but it still takes a while for it to slosh around down this way. Okay. Where's our resupply ship? Still hasn't left. Okay, something's wrong here. It's got... Uh, it's got the ice. Let's see, if anything greater than or equal to zero, output spaceship launch. Oh! A zero signal, yeah, a zero signal doesn't exist, and we're exactly removing the ice signal there. There we go. So this should be 1,999 as well. Yeah, because a zero signal just doesn't exist in Factorio. So it just should just be anything greater than zero. It has the same effect. And it's a bit less misleading. Alright, our ice problems are going to be solved shortly. Or everything? Yeah, you got to watch out for um, anything, everything, and each. The way they work can be a little counterintuitive. Uh, but for everything and anything, pro tip, just read the tool tip here. It is true when there are no inputs, or it is false when there are no inputs. Uh, that's the one you have to watch out for. I turned 8 million prod 1 modules into 1.1k prod 9 modules, still working on more. Wow. I kind of, this thing on the map looks kind of, kind of freaky, honestly. Always got to consider what happens during a power failure. Uh, oh, for the, uh... For the combinators, yes. Especially when you're using delivery cannons. Uh, what the hell? We're wasting fuel. Oh, I left... No, I didn't. Wait, what? Oh, we're not accumulating steam. So we're still putting in more... Uh... Okay. But hold on, I thought we were controlling this based on the output. Uh, output, if steam is less than 20k, you're allowed to take this stuff out. Input, stack size 1, only when the output happens. So how did we get 5 in each reactor? That's the whole point of this circuit, is to not do that. Oh, that's the wrong one. Yeah, I don't actually understand how we ended up with extra fuel in here. I set my cannons to fire when less than zero, and I sent requests as negative signals. That makes sense. We're actually out of ice. Uh, good grief. Also, why is there steam accumulating up here, but not down here? Yeah, this is why I always end up connecting these things. Even though... With the perfect symmetry, it shouldn't be necessary. Oh, that's 
that's not needed on that side. And what? 15 plus 9. That rings a bell. Did I just forget to add this back again? I mean, it won't perfectly balance it right away or anything, but look at this. This is full of steam up the top end. What the? 25k steam here, 9k steam here. What? And these are all connected. I, what? N Nani? If anything, they should have a pattern of more steam in the middle. Fluids depend on the order stuff is placed when bots put it down. Yikes. Oh my goodness. Welp. Hopefully this will help. I mean, it will help to some extent. To rebalance it, but... I wouldn't go counting on it. Steam is less dense, so it floats to the top, of course. Yes, Steam always wants to go north. Obviously. Where's our resupply ship? ETA 2 minutes 48. Okay. I'm still confident that this will work well once it's fully... Uh, like, saturated, but... Right now, not so good. I guess it's not like this being full is gonna waste anything. It, it'll mean this thing won't be working at full speed, but... Or will it? Whatever. It'll all be the same when it's saturated. That's the gravitational pull of the ring? Maybe. Alright, what else are we doing? Uh, how many processes have we made lately? Mm, not a whole lot. We've made 0.4 per minute over the last hour, but that's all been recent since I changed. Oh, we're out of plate. That makes sense, I suppose. 39 Naquim processes versus 4 Tesseracts. I guess this does somewhat prioritize it anyway. How's our ingot production? Smooth. Alright. So we we actually are keeping up with our production bottleneck for Naquim ingots now. And Naquim plate is looking almost identical, which is what I would expect. 3.1k per minute consistently over the last hour. One train load every... Uh, almost one train load every minute. quite good actually. Where are you headed? Making uh, cubes? Yeah, I shouldn't have turned this on before we had a lot more water. I didn't think it would take this much or this long to saturate the water. 
Uh, that said, a lot of it got turned to steam already. It would also help if we didn't have a hiccup with our uh, with our supply ship. ETA is all over the place. Which means it'll be here soon. Sailor, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What kind of design choices should I avoid to not end up with 20 UPS? Uh, uh, well, for one thing, don't do as many cool circuits as I do. Um, you can also do better with things like... Uh, wherever you have the chance to use more beacon brute force and fewer machines, do that. Um, if you want to use mods that reduce the number of entities you need at a train station, for example, you can do that. Um, what else? Things like direct insertion. Um, I did some of that over here, I think. No, not here. Where is it? Yeah, this, this, uh, this lovely recipe right here, impact shielding data. Uh, train go into wall is the icon for it. Recipe goes one locomotive, a bunch of other stuff, and it spits out 1500 scrap. Um, that scrap comes out pretty fast. 336 per second for each half of the, uh, each half of the rail block here. So it wasn't really feasible to belt that down to our usual output station. Uh, so I just shoved it directly into, into some chests and then directly into a train that's going to pick it up. Uh, that is definitely going to save some UPS right there. Bottleneck is a UPS sink. AAI programmable vehicles is really bad for it. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, you can actually... Just having vehicles sitting idle with AAI can drain quite a lot of UPS. Uh, I actually proved that a while ago by having uh, hundreds of vehicles and just switching off the AI one by one. And this wasn't like switching off the AI stuff that I had built to give them orders or something that might have been, you know, giving them orders too rapidly. It was just, they didn't have any orders, they were sitting idle, I turn off the AI uh, for one vehicle at a time, and the UPS crawls back upwards. Might have been direct smarter to direct insert into a scrap recycler. Maybe, maybe not. Um, the thing about that is we have to find room for the scrap recyclers in that block. Can't remember where it is. Here it is. 42 scrap per second from one machine. Scrap recycler only... This is on tier 3 modules, but it's only dealing with 5 per second. Oh, this is actually only on tier 3 modules, so that's a fair comparison. 42 per second... 5 per... 5.6 per second. You would need seven or eight of these to support one, uh, one machine smashing the trains. Uh, how much water do we have? Practically zero? Where's our ship? I think I can, I think I can.
Uh, no idea what the ETA is, but it should be very low by now. As far as I know, normal bottleneck script adds a status icon on the top of the machines. And those icons can be turned on or off. Light directly changes the sprite. So there's no script, but you cannot turn the icons on or off. So just, just displaying those little lights costs that much UPS. And you're telling me seeing if their bottleneck doesn't? Our ship has... I was going to say our ship has arrived. It's already left. That was fast. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh no. Um. Hmm. That's a little bit of a design flaw. Uh. I told it to leave when it was out of ice or when it was out of antimatter canisters. So we got a decent amount of ice, but nowhere near what we were looking for there. Um, let's send it back to Foenestra. And try and think of what we should do with the logic here. Um, hmm. I'll just turn this off for now. I could put all of the buffer chests for these two items over here. And... I don't know. I don't want to have to set up a system that transmits a signal to say what we need for each. I guess... Hmm. I, I think because ice is so much easier to get, I want it to launch if there's no ice here or if there's no antimatter canisters on this end. Um, we've actually got quite a few. this. It's a pretty short trip. I'm sure the bots will be fine. And then... How much have we got? 700 almost? Okay. If anything less than or equal to negative 100. I think we need another decider. Because it's going to be this is full or this is empty. Or this is empty. Uh, let's just get rid of this for the moment. Actually, that part I want to keep. Definitely. Alright, so if antimatter stream uh, canister equals zero, maybe I should just put it on a timer or something. If this is full, or if this is full... Hmm. 
I want it to be... If both of these resources are empty, or if both of these resources are full, or if A is empty and B is full, or if B is empty and A is full. I think that's right. Or to put it another way, if ice is empty and ice is full, it, if ice here is empty or ice here is full, and if this is empty or this is full. Both of those pairs of conditions. This is a little confusing. Let's see if I can lay it out with combinators. Um, decider. Alright, so ice from the ship is equal zero, or if ice from here equals 9600 times two, uh, what is that? Nine. 19,200. Let's just call it 19,000. Uh, green signal. Green signal. Actually, let's just call it ice signal. Alright, ice one. Ice. And this goes over here. So if this is empty or this is full, then we get an, a water ice signal. Uh, and then for antimatter stream, same deal. I mean, not antimatter stream, antimatter canister. Only we're looking for like 2300 antimatter canisters. Let's say 2390. Okay. And we want... I think what we want is... Either of those. If ice greater than zero, output ice one. And if... Antimatter canister greater than zero, antimatter canister one. And then we want both of these conditions to be true. Either this is empty or this is full. Either this is empty or this is full. For, that's true for both resources. So we can just output something like green signal, green signal has to equal two. Um, I could maybe reduce the combinator count here. But I think the logic is sound. Is the left ice combinator green connected? Uh, no, 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 it isn't. So we've got 15k ice, 561 antimatter canisters in the ship right now. 
Um, I think we wanted to... Uh, I think I can do this with fewer combinators if I do a blacklist for this requester chest. So we're going to say everything that's in the ship, bring it over here, except for uh, uranium stuff and... Uh, empty canisters. So we're going to go negative a million on the set requests. And then we're going to turn this into... I was going to say each greater than zero output each, but that's literally just... Connect the green wire. So this is a requester chest, so we can request from buffers. Um, we're going to... Set requests to the total contents of the spaceship, minus any uh, uranium or magnetic canisters. We're going to put that into everything equals zero. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing this when the ship leaves. Hmm. but we don't have room. We've got three chests. We could just do this in parallel. Um, so that goes there. So as soon as the ship leaves, these inserters are active, so we don't put stuff back in the ship. And I forgot the part where this doesn't allow magnetic canisters and such. Whoops. finished bringing the wrong stuff to these chests. I mean, the requests are correct. The bots are still... The bots are still taking their sweet time with some of these orders. I mean, it'll get sorted out after we're gone anyway, but I would rather fix it up immediately. Are you still putting the wrong stuff in these chests, really? Come on now. Why are they still... Are the bots... Uh, some of them are taking that long to get here? Good grief. Also, how's our water doing down here? That's good. Oh, this one's still empty. Wow. Wow. Okay. Not what I was expecting. This one really does take a while to saturate, and it's still wasting fuel. Why is it doing this? E 
even if it is still putting in fuel when we don't need it, we shouldn't be getting five antimatter canisters in here. Stack size is one. We have to detect a magnetic canister. That only happens when we output. So how on earth are we getting five antimatter canisters put in here? It's the exact same design we've used all over the place. It shouldn't... It shouldn't be any different. We're doing the same thing over here. And there it is, no fuel. We're still... Well, no, we finished burning this one. Once this drops, once the steam here drops to a certain amount, it'll pick up the antimatter ca uh, magnetic canister and then it'll put more antimatter in. Enable, disable, magnetic canister greater than zero, override stack size one. Enable, disable, magnetic canister greater than zero, override stack size one. I don't see what's different here. Fire the antimatter cannons? Don't you need to quadruple this? Yeah, but I want to th test it thoroughly first, and it's taking a while to saturate. Um, I wish I could witness... I guess if we just wait until this runs out, we can maybe see why it's doing this. Oh, don't tell me. Oh, don't tell me. It's because they're out of sync. Oh, no. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, we figured it out. So this is going to prevent them from putting more in. And then these ones... Okay, so now they're all, now they're all empty, I think. It's because, it's because there was like one missing earlier. Or maybe not just one. Well, no, that, that, that would be all it takes, because each cycle they would put one extra in until it fills up. Yeah, I think we solved the mystery. That's how the exact same system could end up accumulating, um... Could end up accumulating fuel things in here. The steam is empty for a while at the start. Yeah, but that still doesn't account for how we were putting in greater than one antimatter canister per output of a uh, magnetic canister. Okay, how's our water looking? Still not getting to the middle. Actually, that's kind of a problem. Um, we're at 5k here, I think we have to go higher. Because I think 5,000 in this container isn't enough for it to flow through to here. Interesting. Maybe this should have been over here. I could still put it there with Picadollars without even losing any water. made nice circuit. It uses set, reset, latch. Sets when empty canister is pulled out. Resets when the new canister is put in. Won't put new canister in until there's less than specified threshold of steam in the nearby tank. Nice. Could you go to 20k without locking it up? Uh, possibly. 
Um, what's happened in the past is I set... I think definitely when I set it to like 24k water, um, it turned out after stuff was cycled, it was overfilled. So I wanted to start too low, if anything. I didn't think there was such a thing as too low, really. But it turns out if this only goes to 5k, then we don't get water down the middle here. It'll stay blast faster if you push it higher. Yeah, I know. I remember you started with, like, four reactors here. Yeah. Uh, back in the day when we thought it might be somewhat sane. Alright, this is finally settled down. Fantastic. Uh, shouldn't this be looking for ice? It is looking for ice. Huh? Oh. Okay. What about this antimatter canister? It is requesting antimatter canister. Why... Wait, do we not have enough logistic bots? We've got... No, we've got a thousand, and almost all of them are available. So why is it not picking up this antimatter canister? Logistic request. Antimatter canister. Request from buffer chests. Okay, now it's now it's picking it up. Or at least they're getting taken somewhere else. Maybe that was why. This was already queued up. Alright, so the conditions have definitely been met. Uh, for both of these, one is empty, one is full. Or rather, either this is empty or this is full. We want that condition for both resources. So if this is empty, signal one. If this is empty, signal one. If this is full, signal one. And then if that's greater than zero, green signal. If that's greater than zero, green signal. And then, I guess there's actually no harm in connecting all of these like so. And then we just say, if green signal equals 2. Um, then we're going to launch. And there's probably a way to reduce the combinator count a little bit here. Green signal equals two. Spaceship launch. Signal one. Fantastic. Now then, if there was a way to say if two signals are greater than zero, output one spaceship launch. Um, that would be fantastic. Um, we could do a constant combinator with a negative, maybe. Like, nice. Negative three. Antimatter canister. Negative three. And if anything, it's false if there are no inputs. Well, there's always going to be inputs, I'm making sure of that. Or I could set these to 1, even. 1, 2, 
one and one and then and then I could say if everything greater than one, right? It's true when there are no inputs. Everything greater than one. Connect. So this is true right now. Connect to this. It's false now. And then get rid of these. So yeah, I think that's right. Ice or ice, this or this, and both have to be greater than... Yeah, both have to have one of these conditions. So the ship isn't detected, therefore it's sending the spaceship launch signal, that's fine. Um, I think that's right. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for hanging out, Whiskers. Do take care. Yeah, Picker Dollies is a great mod. It'll preserve these settings and wire connections, and it also won't let you cheat with the wire length. Um, I could put this up here, actually. And then... This goes here. Yeah, I think that's a bit more sort of readable. Also, while we're cleaning this up, why don't we just put that over there? I do feel like that looks a bit more obvious. All right, I think that's our circuit. And the reason, the only reason we need this is, um, again, a zero signal just sort of doesn't exist. So if we didn't have this and we said every, if everything is greater than zero, that would just, for starters, that would just be true because this is true when there's no inputs but it would also be true if we're only getting the ice signal. Okay. How is our water system looking over here? Still no fluid input in the middle. Are you serious? Um, alright, how about... Oops. How about we move this? And I kind of wanted to put this in here anyway. And that might help just a little bit. As far as... Getting the water to the middle is concerned. Then 10k. And same thing over here. Move these around a bit. chest first. Whoops. Then same recipe. Switching back from the NAVSAT removes that. Okay. 
That might make it slightly easier to get water to the middle here. Surprisingly, more than I thought. It looks like it's about to happen. Yeah, there's, there's our fluid in the middle. I thought we just had to wait for it. And we're definitely not having trouble getting water to the edge. And the fact that the water is coming back up this way is going to create a positive feedback loop. Right? Right? Luxignodendros? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Well... It's getting some input over here. I'm pretty sure we have more um, exchanges than we actually need. Let's check. Uh, 48 times 562 is 26.9 of these. We've got 24 high temp turbine generators. So it's probably maybe okay. I don't know. Doesn't look like we can get the maximum out of this. It still might be about as good as it gets. Doesn't quite make sense to me. Uh, I guess when we get steam saturated? Yeah, that's actually happening. Weirdly enough, the steam gets saturated at the ends first. And then it's now getting saturated in the middle. Which you'd think would mean... Oh, this is saturated. This is the last one to saturate right here, and it's getting faster. This is the storage tank that we're checking. This is actually literally the last storage tank that we should be checking um, to decide if we should put more fuel in, if we don't want to waste any. We're definitely wasting fuel anyway, because this is this heat is like would be over ten thousand. Um, I do care more about making sure we keep this going at full uh, full tilt rather than saving the absolute maximum amount of fuel. Once you start up the ring, it won't be wasting fuel anymore, yeah. Alright, I think we can at least turn on a few more of these things. Let's see how it goes. I want to see this thing working under stress. So we should have about 10, 20, uh, 30, 40, and not 50 gigawatts here. We're, we're using 10 already. This will put us at 20, I believe. 30. Forty. And we definitely can't manage 50. But what I might do is leave that running as it is for the moment. And we'll see how this thing behaves.
I guess as long as 5,000 degree steam is reaching these, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, as long as these ones... Yeah, as long as 5k steam is saturated here, 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 and here, it doesn't matter if these ones are saying low input fluid. That should be fine. The fact that we've got steam accumulating here still tells me it's doing okay. Whoa, what? Whoa, okay. Uh, media. That's, that's a thing that can happen. Info and Estra. Fair enough. Uh, good thing it missed. Well, it effectively missed. We need a, a couple of repair packs here. An interdimensional media, yeah. Um, do we have... I assume we have, uh, media defense installations handy. We do have our construction ships here. Um, I wanted to put another power plant up here, so let's do it at about this spot. Fantastic. And request a chest. I think it's 480. No, it's 960. That fits in a chest here. We just do it this way. Snap to grid relative. Why is it two by two? Oh, I see. should be sufficiently overkill, I would hope. Well, it's such a tiny amount of power compared to Foenestra itself, why don't we just... I can't quite fit that there. Why don't we just add some more of these over here? What's our power looking like? Totally fine. Even while all of these are charging at the same time. We actually don't have ammo here. Okay. Where's our resupply ship? Pretty sure that's still going to be... Less container stress than hull stress. Fantastic. Oh, actually it doesn't show it yet. here. Uh, ammo. Hmm. Currently it leaves if ice or antimatter streams full. Uh, antimatter canisters. Hmm. 
It probably would be better if I had a request system for this. Let's just launch it for now. Uh, everything? Hold on, what? Uh, if anything, less than zero. Top left turbine was not working, is it flipped? This one? It's working. The 500 degree steam is backed up. What? Why aren't these problems at least symmetrical? Water here is full. Oh my good... Okay, we've got a lot of water in the middle now. Wait, what? On this side, water is totally saturated up the top, and on this side, it's, like, low input fluid. Are you serious? Uh, symmetrical... Designs. Um, we could probably get water to flow through here as well. I don't think that's going to make a difference. This is pretty frustrating, to be honest. I mean, the, the, the whole point of this layout here is water goes round and round and round, water goes round and round and round, water goes round and round and round. We don't have some big uh, bottleneck that all of the water has to go through and the design is consistent all the way through and yet here we have some really inconsistent fluid behavior even though I added these uh, things here so that water could flow between um, both halves much more reliably, even though it shouldn't be necessary. This one's bottlenecking on outputting water. Maybe I should add some... I don't know if this would help or anything. Maybe if I add some containers here. I mean, I'm sure it'll help in this moment, but... I don't know if it'll help in the long run. Maybe if we deliberately pumped it to the middle. That shouldn't be necessary. How does this one have low input? It should suck up whatever water comes through here as a priority. Well, on the plus side, we've got 5k steam everywhere. This one's looking better. 
Uh, but then again, it remains to be seen how long that will last. Maybe I should connect these up all over the place as a matter of course. This should connect all the way over here as well. Sixteen tiles. I think you just need a gap in the middle so water from the left doesn't flow to the right. Now I don't think restricting the flow is going to be advantageous. over here as well. It helps if the heat exchangers exceed 1200 water per second now. Uh, the heat exchangers only do 562 each. We have a pattern of working low input fluid, working low input fluid, working low input fluid. And the middle ones. These are working output full, working output full, working output full. Uh, why? Why is why is fluid like this? I mean the combined total since you don't want the whole connected system to exceed a pipe capacity. Uh, we can go faster than 1200 with these pumps. See that peaking a little bit over 1200? And we're, we're getting way less than 1200 water out of this. Uh, about 1015 or less than that water comes back up this way. most difficult thing about powering the ring was the plumbing. Yeah, kind of wish there was some high-tech stuff that wasn't steam-based, to be honest. And it's only because of fluid mechanics in this game. Like, the whole point of this repeating thing where we immediately recycle the water back in was so that we wouldn't have this kind of problem. And yet, here we are. The problem is the pump fills the pipe, but both exchanges are pulling from it. Probably one gets arbitrarily prioritized. Still, um, as far as I can tell, it's producing close enough, uh, is producing power consistently, like, close enough. The real stress test would be, you know, if we calculate exactly what power we could get from this and then put it under that load minus, like, 2%, and then see how it falls apart, which I kind of expect it would at this point. 
Um, but if we build four of these, we should have, like, a significant amount of breathing room. Since one has arbitrary priority, there are cases where it's fed from both sides and the one next to it gets nothing. Oh, lovely. Does it even matter if we get the steam, though? I mean, it kind of does because the water output ends up becoming a problem. But currently... I'm not actually seeing a problem. No, it looks like it's actually working very well. If we only looked at the northern side, we would think it was perfect. Which leads me to wonder if there's a case where, just by chance, we get both sides working very well, and then we think this design is perfect, and then we use it somewhere else and pull out our hair wondering why. Is that... Oh! That might help a little bit. Yeah, that might make a little bit of a difference. One job? I don't think it should make much of a difference, but it's something. Should help our steam rebalance just a tad. Actually, that might help more than I thought thought. No, probably not. Okay. We're still on 75% spaceship victory. I'm actually almost getting a little concerned. Uh, still we are missing Naquim processes. I still see bots moving here. We don't have tesseracts because we don't have cubes. Um, we don't have cubes because... Not sure. We've actually got a train picking them up right now and taking it to a whole other block. Which we do need. I think I prioritized this earlier. Because yeah, I did. Because we need it's almost saturated now. Uh we need time space anomaly data for this thing. And we Oh, not this thing, this thing. And we weren't getting any. Alright, well, that'll... Honestly, it, I took so long to update it that we could have almost just left it to completely saturate. Might even be a good idea. What was that other data that was missing? Singularity data which is also missing cubes. Hmm. Didn't we already get a whole lot of teleportation data, though? 281 isn't a whole lot. We're missing wormhole data. Which one's wormhole data? This one. That's also Naquim cubes. Uh, I'm thinking... I'm thinking this should probably be prioritized at this point. What's the priority on the science block? I think it's 11? It's 10. I'll drop this down to... 9. 
Alright, so stuff is still working, it's just taking a little while. Are we still charging these? Oh, there's no ammo. Okay. Oh, we just got ammo. Fantastic. How much ammo did we even bring? Uh, that's an amount. Considering each of them holds five, we've got fifteen. Uh, 75. Yeah, we can definitely fill that up. Okay. So I think this will be sufficient, even if it's not perfect. Um, time to start building more of these, I guess. I kind of want to leave that where it is. We could just expand down this way. Let's get some superchargers in place before we do. And some radar construction pylons. And scaffolding. Over. That should probably be enough. I guess we can... I guess we can call this test complete for now. We can stop wasting power. Let's switch this off. And maybe we'll actually get water in here if we let this thing calm down. print this thing again. Select new contents, remove the tiles, remove the superchargers. And we need 16 reactors, 32, 60. A lot of short and one by one pipes. 350. Call it 350 and 200 for those. Where's our construction ships? Number four is at Calidus Orbit. That's right, I was gonna. I was going to expand the solar panels here and add another anchor. And find out if... Find out if we could put more than one anchor at each star. It's going to take like 10 of these blocks, I think it was, or was it 20? Just to scrounge together enough power to test that theory. Maybe I should just disconnect some of the energy beam emitters temporarily instead. Um, I don't think there's any reason I need to 
personally be here for now. So let's head back and we'll make one more dimensional anchor. Where did I put my ship? It's way over here. Whoops. Um, can we have more jetpack? Apparently not. Orbit. And it looks like looks like our design for uh, for when to send the ship back seems to be working. Maybe I don't have to worry too much about the logic on the other end if the logic here is good. And I might just sort of assume that it's going to bring enough media defense ammo. That's going to take a little while. Okay. I'm actually kind of liking this uh, victory ship. Is that a moat? Combinator. Open logic. Indeed. At first glance, it looked like a little robot that had fallen over and was having trouble. What is this? Tra oh, right, that's the vanilla train. That's fine. What is this train doing? Uh, what is this train doing? Oh, I think it's trying to pick up Naquium cubes. Whoops. Uh, let's just switch this off. That's fine. After this train load of after sphere collectors, uh, I think we'll just stop. I don't think we're ever going to be bottlenecked on Arco spheres again. Also, why do we still have these storage chests? Well, we don't have any construction bots. Oh, yeah, we do. Wait, how many storage chests do we have here? Why don't we just get rid of all of these, get rid of the filter. And the Arcospheres can all get delivered back this way. Sooner or later. Why are we putting data in here? Oh no. Oh no. There was a reason I didn't have an unfiltered storage chest. Oh no. Uh, could you stop? Hmm. That's, uh, that, that's a little bit awkward. Why don't we turn this into a buffer chest? And we'll bring the spiders over. Mistakes were made, indeed. Schnipper, good to see you again.
welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, looks like we've cleaned this out. Except for this one storage tank. We are three minutes out from Nalvis Orbit. Let's make sure our ingots are still flowing. Uh, there was a little dip, but other than that, it looks like it went solid for about an hour. I am existing, that's all I can do for now, lol, but hope you're well. Thank you. You too. Okay, um... Glop... Glopidan? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're doing a train of Naquium plate almost every minute, and yet... Uh... Our research hasn't budged. Not that... Uh, this reaching the end will make any difference. Not until we get uh, two more researchers of this. In fact, I can actually queue it up. Spaceship, uh, factory spaceship four and five will get us up to 3,500 hull stress. So yeah, we need like 2k plus 12k divided by about 2 because of productivity bonuses. It also makes this above a chest. I love that animation on the deep space, uh, deep supercomputers. Very cool. Let's find more of them. They're not active right now. I guess if we ever find them inactive, we know they're doing well enough. Processing the junk data parts. Where's our train? Is this it? Nope. Junk data cards go burr. What are we making here? Experimental bioculture. I actually don't know why we would be consuming bioscience right now. Or where where else this could be going. Uh, the, the factory is slowly becoming a mystery to me. It is just too big. Oh no, I was about to order a burger and I refreshed a page and burgers disappeared? Oh no. Burgers disappeared from offering. What, like a... Like a limited time deal or something? So we're dropping this off to make experimental biomass, but the biomass is totally saturated. That's what I like to see, I suppose. They probably ran out of ingredients for today. I can't remember which it is, uh, lettuce or something, some kind of green, uh, that, like, fast food places are not going to be serving here anymore. They're substituting it for spinach or something. I mean, I like spinach, so... 
It's fine by me, but not everyone likes spinach. Alright, we need to set this to take what type of data cards? Reality hypergraph analysis data. What are these bots doing? That's kind of strange. And this one is teleportation data. Not that we have any. I've never seen this before. The logistic bots seem to be using the spider's roboports to recharge. What? That's so strange. Alright, this will sort itself out. Wait, what data is this? Maybe not. Let's put some buffer chests up here. Wait, don't we have buffer chests? Oh, for these things. And we never actually put these types of data... Oh, but we want purple chests for these. Because they output... Um... Arcospheres. Uh, it's getting itself sorted out. It's fine. As soon as the demand appears for these. I could just bump... Why is this requesting only three cryonite rods? Uh, why don't we go a thousand of each? Then again, isn't that just going to pour way more resources into this? I could bump it back down to 50 once things have calmed down here. I guess we weren't... I guess we were pouring it all into a purple chest as it was. It's only like one plate to make these data cards. So I'm really not concerned about those. I think the spiders are standing on top of a robopod. Oh, was that it? Yeah, yeah, they were. Sneaky. Okay. I'm just going to leave them here. I often bring them back here. What do we need for another anchor? Uh, eight tesseracts. And four comprehensive deep space catalogs. The rest is, like, easy. For this stage of the game. And we're going to need, like, seven more anchors, regardless. So I need to pick up 28 comprehensive deep space. I won't worry that much about the tesseracts. Everything else is in the mall. Morpheus South, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, what about... Uh, here's our stuff. Or Foenestra. Reactor number two of four is on the way. Why is... oh. And stay. And... Uh, I 
hope I blueprinted this with the correct setting on this combinator. I'm gonna wait till we switch that to turn the whole thing on. We can probably stop using these two now. But I should probably salvage the water and steam for that matter. I could pump it all into this system, actually. Let's get rid of the request chests for ice here. And then... What is all connected, right? Over here. It's not enough water to worry about. I mean, we have to ship the ice in. It's enough of a pain. Let's pump it as fast as we can. More or less. And then... Well, I'll wait till this is as empty as it's going to get first. And then we just connect... This is water, isn't it? Connect this over here. Actually, I should connect it to this part. That's actually kind of tricky. But we don't need this fail-safe anymore. The steam is kind of a bit more valuable, but, well, I was going to say steam everywhere is saturated, but no, we've got many tanks that can take steam over here. I'm not going to worry about the 500 degree steam. actually go over here. It's pretty convenient. That'll probably be fine. And 5k steam from up here. It's going to be a bit more tricky. I could change this bit. Uh, over here, I suppose. Oh, and it can just join down here. In fact, as long as we're a little bit patient, this would be fine. Okay. Uh, and then we just need to get rid of 
water inputs over here. Give that some time, probably quite a bit of time, but we should have more than enough water and steam down here before we get started. Alright, we are back at Alvis Orbit. Let's grab our remote. Head over to... Well, first of all, I have to pick up... Was it Tier 3 catalogs? Tier 3. That's here, isn't it? Yeah. Comprehensive Tier 3 Deep Space Catalog. Eight Naquim Tesseracts, and a partridge in a pear tree. I'm sure there's Tesseracts here as well. There aren't actually. Not even a little bit. How do we have so few... Oh, something's busted here. Hold on. Quantum processes aren't getting put in here. Oh, I see. Tesseracts have to be put here before these will input, and that stays balanced. So it's actually a Tesseract shortage. And it's actually a plate shortage. And the plate is on its way right now. Okay. And we've got plenty of plate here, actually. Can we bump up the... There's already a train limit of four. Hmm. I could add another chest for Naquium plate. And then we can bump up the request. And that'll allow two trains worth. And just to make it really easy, if we want to change it back later, I'll add it as a another signal. So we should see a second train scheduled to pick up plate quite soon. Um, but that still leaves me without... Any Tesseracts? Well, we can at least bring back a stack of Comprehensive. I think I'll just wait for some Tesseracts to be made here. Should be two trains coming now. Nope, apparently not. We've got another little traffic jam here. Herky Chan, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're still doing star probes. I'm pretty sure I set this up. Yeah, we're not wasting star probes here. Why is there no accumulator charge over here? What? Huh? What? What the... What? 189 gigawatts. 189 gigawatts. What? How? What? Is 
Is it because this one? This isn't connected to this. And... Maybe just the idle consumption? Wait, no, we're getting... 12.1 times 4 megawatts from these solar panels? Maybe they're all getting taken from this network or something? That's really weird. Let's just... Make sure that's all one network. Much better. Overlapping power networks can be very strange, it seems. We're still waiting on this plate. Because it takes too long to load data cards in here. Hmm. Can we just not pick up data cards from this location? Uh, that might be good. Actually... Like that. What are you doing? Data cards also. Get out of here. I'm pretty sure I set up data cards down here to be able to be picked up by short trains. Also, probably data card recycling. We can arrange for that. Might turn into a problem with a train sitting here later on. But I don't think that's going to come up very often. Um, I'm surprised to see so few data cards here, though. We're out of copper. That's concerning. Copper plate... Uh, looks like it's been relatively consistent. This is one disadvantage of Omni Smelters. We can't do like we do with Naquim ingots and say, yes, Naquim ingots are definitely getting produced consistently right now. Until this train gets its plate. I don't really care about star probes right now. I really don't care about star probes right now. You're going to get prioritized, aren't you? you do it. Okay. And I don't suppose another train... There is already another train bringing our plate. It's going to get here first. Well... Everything else we need for an anchor. I might just set this up ahead of time. So I don't have to pull everything together to handcraft. Anchor. And we've actually 
already got some comprehensive. Not that much, though. So all we'll have to drop off here is the Tesseracts to make this happen. There we go. Speaking of having to power the anchor... Well, actually, I, I think we'll just go bodily to Calidus Orbit. I'll temporarily disconnect a bunch of the energy beam emitters and injectors, and we'll be able to see if it counts having two anchors at the same place before we commit to building way more solar panels. Alright, so that's our eight tesseracts, or nine even. Closer we to getting signs. It's always Naquim processes these days. And we've only got 12. And they're waiting on Tesseracts, and we just prioritize Tesseracts higher. Yeah, so it shouldn't be that long. Basically, one Tesseract equals one Naquim processor. And we need 160 to trigger an automatic delivery. this even higher? Why don't we go for like six train loads of Nequim plate? Uh, let's see, 3.2, 6.4, 19,000? I absolutely want cubes saturated. Or as close to as we can get. I guess I could have just direct inserted that. Uh, wow, that's a lot of cable that you've put in. Not even. Alright, let's give it a hand. our anchor. Let's head to Nalvis Orbit. Do I want to resupply at all? I don't think so. I don't think there's any need. And back at Calidus Orbit. We may as well add some more. Over here. Oh, I forgot I had this here. From when we were designing that ship. Oh, and ice are looking good. 
So is anti-matter canister, to be honest. Alright, let's get going. Elidus Orbit. It's taking a little time to unload, but that's okay. It'll take a little while to go through all of this. Tesseract scooper, therefore, uh, processes scooper. I'm trying to think of a better way to, like, really control the priorities of various things. I guess I could always... I could make these requester chests, um, but say that there has to be X uh, tesseracts in the logistic network. But if the... The way we're going, it's a perfectly 50-50 split. of tesseracts and processes, that's probably good. I mean, I'm sure it's for the best in the long run, but I just want those processes right now. We could maybe... Huh. Maybe we could go a little faster here? Whoops. Since we're prioritizing cubes and prioritizing this block, uh, we might actually be able to go significantly faster with the Tesseracts. I hope. I don't think we need more machines to make processes, though. How long is this recipe? 20 seconds and 30 seconds. The output is really abysmal. But it works before we get another Tesseract replacing it anyway. Oh, we're out of plate again. Plate is on the way, technically, but... These trains, though... Wait, this one's already asking for plate. Why is it asking for only 40? And then this one is going to ask for 800 that isn't there. That's suboptimal. Oh, 
Oh, we're here. Easy. Let's go up this way. And... Put down another anchor, I guess. You cannot have more than one dimensional anchor per star. Okay, that's about what I was expecting. But I am glad I confirmed it. I guess we'll ride a construction ship out to goodness knows where. Probably the nearest seven stars, to be honest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, question mark. I don't know if the anchors are going to be where we're able to jump to or not. Oof. We could invest a lot of time into this just to run that experiment. Really tempted to cheat to find out what Foenestra does. So I need to go to seven more stars and give them an extra 60 gigawatts. This whole thing is 53 gigawatts right here. Rocket Tom, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what I could do is... Hmm. I could go to stars where we've already got a power s system. I don't... This one's already got 80 gigawatts. We could, like, unplug the other stuff. This one has, what was it, 53. Regalus has nothing. Hankerus. Hankerus is at 73. It would still be a pain to set up enough to test it. This one's only got seven. Good grief. I don't think I have any energy beaming out here. What about Inglis? Only 15 gigawatts. Maybe it, maybe it would be easier to set up. I would need like three of the big reactors that I just made. If I were to use antimatter, could always do one in Stardust. Isn't Stardust a... We, we have to set it up at a star. That's the only place it'll let us. Oh. What is this ship doing? What the? Uh, I have no memory of why I sent this ship to Wexavis. Oh no. This was this was an Oblong Lobolata ship. Um. Okay. Back to Nalvis you go. I hope you've got enough heat. You have 2.2k heat, and it's the threshold is 500. That's probably fine. Okay. How many processes are we making? per minute, 2.4 per minute. So what, over an hour before we fill a train like this? Um, tell you what, how about we bump this down a bit? We 
we'll at least get a little bit of science done before we finish the stream today. That's the wrong delivery. That's the one I'm looking for. Uh, where are we going? Since it's going to be a long and tedious process, I might put the anchors down off stream. It's going to take a long time. Like, a really long time. 60 gigawatts at each star, jeez. And we only get 100% more solar power if we upgrade to Naquium for, for the solar panels. So instead of 10... Uh, instead of 10 blocks of 255 flat solar panel 2s, which costs us practically nothing at this point because we only care about Naquium. Uh, sorry, instead of 20 of those, we need 5 of these. 10 of these. But that would be this many uh, Naquium cubes. That's way, 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 way too many. That's 2550 per star, by the way, so that's seven times that. That's going to greatly delay our win. Alright, let's drop this stuff off. Get resupplied. Uh, how are we doing at Foenestra right now? Looks like we've got everything except for condenser turbines, which I forgot to request more of from our construction ships. Well. I guess I'll send them back to Nalvis Orbit. Uh, I do like having the anchor here. That definitely makes it a bit easier. Not the anchor, the uh, clamp. And the w I, I actually really like the way these clamp to each other. It can be a bit of a nuisance if it happens by accident, but this is actually really handy. How is our 25k? Alright. I think it's going to take about... Oh, don't tell me. They didn't even finish the pipes to pump this stuff down here. No. That's a little sad. I forgot that significant data was even a thing we had to think about. Oh, did we never upgrade these? I think extended material insight was the highest tier, right? Uh, what am I doing? FNEI. Material insight. Yeah, extended is the top tier. And we only need a uh, quantum supercomputer to do that. What about significant data? I think we maxed out our efficiency on that ages ago. Yeah, we can do that with a quantum supercomputer as well. Okay. The flow of Naquium is so far beyond any expectation that I had that I would bother with 
initially, but it's just never enough. Also, did we not get our science over here? Don't tell me the processors went somewhere else. Oh, no. Uh, processor. There's 14 of them here. What's our request for them? I'm pretty sure I have a train request for processors. 160. And priority must be really high in this place. Yeah, so all of the processors are coming here. Oh. That... That explains a couple of things. Okay, I'm, I'm glad I put a very small limit on supercomputers. Um, could you give those back, please? Where's my spider? No, I said give those back. All of them. Alright. Let's drop off some of these for science. Not over there, we need them here. I guess I could just set this... Hmm. I could set it as the same priority as the mall. Otherwise, one of them is going to get nothing. Yeah, I think I have to. I would love to just prioritize this, but then the mall's literally never going to get any Nequim processes. Maybe I should do that, and I can just come and steal them when I need them. What what do Nequim presses go, processes go into? Let's see. Uh, science, of course. Nexus. Uh, data cards, deep supercomputer, thruster suit, energy shield, ArcoLink storage. Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna make this a higher priority than the mole. gonna run out of them so fast I don't need to worry about putting distributing them into more of these chests also don't really need stack inserters here but what are you gonna do glad we have a Decent stock of cubes and plate here. Is this actually as fast as we can go? Oh, it is. This is all tier 6 speed. Yeah, that's surprisingly slow. 240 second crafting time. Jeez. For science, indeed. Before... Uh, we're looking at 192 per minute. All right. So it should be like a couple of minutes in game when we get our research done. I can hang out for that. I 
think, I'm not sure, I think the next delivery of Deep Space Science packs is going to be uh, enough to finish this. Assuming we don't run out. How many processors did I bring in here? We're going to get eight times that. It was like 40 or something, right? If that. Yeah, I think it'll be just enough. Probably. Maybe. Definitely don't need two stack inserters for this part. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times eight, about 88. Uh, yeah, I think we're probably just barely going to reach the three stack uh, threshold to trigger a delivery here. Go science, go. I'm seriously considering just setting this to like train limit 2 or something because there's always a little traffic jam around here how are our ingots doing very very good fantastic Alright, let's head back to the mall, I guess. What was that? Autoglave could not find any enemies switching off. Nice. That's why we just got a little hitch there. Uh, Coniferous is clear. Very good. Now we can delete surface. Um, the save file will get significantly smaller. Uh, and we've now got two Vitamelange planets that are really in spitting distance uh, cleared. Although, we're not really going to need them. If we put up with this so-called low throughput of Naquitite till the end of the game, only about four belts. Um, then I don't think we're going to need more Vitamelange. If I tap into Melon... Oh, did I leave this scanning the whole time? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of did. Whoops. Probably good time to stop. And I guess we could look around a bit and try and find the best starting place um, for yet another Naquitite outpost. Uh, 7.6 million right here seems like a good start. And there's also quite a bit over here. By the way, if you can jump with the gate from a star to another, would that really make things easier compared to the setup costs? No, I, I think this is 
like if that's what the if that's what Faunestra does I think it's a much more extreme example of deep space belts which is to say by the time you can get them why even bother the game is basically finished anyway um I don't want to pour Naquium into slightly faster belts, although it is nice. Like, maybe I would just do the underground belts uh, for deep space belt. Um, but yeah, like, it goes from 45 per second to 64. The underground belts are really, really nice. But the cost of it and how late you get it into the game, like, We've already built everything, pretty much. Uh, what's the point of having nicer belts if we would have to literally, like, rebuild the entire base to take advantage of them? Isn't it 90 per second? Uh, no. Uh, we've got some... I, I don't even know where it is anymore. We've got some deep space belt lying around. I think it's in the old mall. Yeah, it's in here somewhere. There it is. Belt speed, 64 items per second. Um, the thing that's really nice about it is... Oh, I just realized I can't even... I don't even have a way to... tell the bots to call it up because I haven't researched it. Uh, can we, like just happen upon it, perhaps? Probably not. Yeah, I have no idea where it actually is. And we can't make requests for things that we haven't researched. Um, but yeah, the underground belt range is something like from here to here. It's actually insane. Although that massive length is pretty much just what you need to get past something like a space manufactory. In 0.6 it should be 90 per second, I see. But yeah, even if it is 90 per second, I mean, that's huge. Oh, here we go. Some random... What are the odds of that? <laughs> it just happened to... I just happened to stand right next to it out of all of these chests here. Uh, I mean, 90 per second is double the speed. That's pretty impressive. But I think the same is still going to apply. Uh, unless they seriously nerfed what it takes to unlock it. You need all four deep space... Uh, you need all four tier 4 science packs and deep space 2. That's... in terms of tech, that's like 90-95% of the game. Uh, and like, e even when I had... you know... I I've got lots of old technology lying around that I said that I wanted to replace, but it's just too much. It, it, it would take, like, doubling the length of the playthrough to go back and upgrade things. Oh, research is happening. Wait, what? You're kidding, that was it? Wait, is there more? No. And no, we missed it. That... So, like, 600... Uh, we need, like, another 600 science packs. Uh, so what, about... 250 Naquium processors or something? Before we get a spaceship victory unlocked? And that's only technically unlocked. That's not actually accessible. We need another 12,000 deep space science packs. Okay, I think that is just about going to do it for today. 
Let's see who's streaming Factorio. And we got Mucky, Tumbling, Gamer Circle, El Waito. Do you have red modules in your labs? Yeah, but only tier 6. I should probably go to the trouble of replacing them. I don't remember where I've put all the tier 9s though. Um, let's go Gamer's Circle today. Thank you all for watching, do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you're into that, if you have any questions or anything, by all means. Uh, tomorrow is going to be Variety Day, but uh, Wednesday, uh, the day after tomorrow, I'm going to be streaming uh, on what is usually my day off to make up for uh, the day before yesterday. Thanks for the stream, thanks for hanging out, Chucky. Going for the Stargate earlier would help with the deep space transportation. Yeah, I mean, it takes so much. It honestly takes so much to activate the Stargate. I think you could just finish the game instead. Um, enjoy your night. Yep, you too. Silent Storm. Thanks for hanging out. What's this train looking for? I'm pretty sure we've set that up already. Oh, let's not forget to press the raid button. All right. Say hello to Gamer's Circle for me. Take uh, Evil Plum. Guys, do me a favor, go give Tyrannosaurus Hacks. Tyrannosaurus Hacks a follow. Big Factorio guy.